Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another lovely Saints game day. I'm your host for today, Matthias Mothais Talbot, joined by Dan Banners, also known as Danners, here on the mic with me here. Yeah, thank you. Good to be back on the microphone. Game day action right around the corner here for us, and we just get into kind of the sweet spot of this fall season. We've got, of course, the very tail end of the NECC Legends Division, which is going to be starting off our card, but then we get to see the first of our nice Star League playoffs right around the corner, so it should be an exciting night. It's going to be a very, very exciting night, and the games we have here tonight are our first game is, uh, I think it's NECC Legends mm -hmm. Division, Valorant with the Toronto Metropolitan University, yep. their blue team, in fact, here. A long-standing rival of St. Clair, but we'll see how today goes. I think their standings aren't as good as they used to be, but we'll take a f closer look at that. Mm -hmm. But going into the rest of our games here today, we have NACE, Star League, League of Legends. It's the playoffs here mm -hmm. versus Bethany Lutheran College. Yep. And, of course, it's our varsity team. It's all varsity games today. No yep. academy today, unfortunately, but it's going to be a very good, the best of the best of our teams. No, absolutely. And of course, wrapping up the card there, we see Northeastern University going up against our varsity squad. That's also going to be a nice playoff action as well. And all of the things or things to take note in regards to the nice playoffs, going to quickly touch on it right now. These playoffs are all single elimination. So uh, for some, for one of these teams, it might be an early uh, exit out of the postseason. But I know there's a lot of high expectations on all the teams here today to try and perform, get into that next round. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on. But why don't we take a look at the top of the card, what we're going to be seeing up first. Yes, um, we're going to have TMU Blue receive Valorant Legends Division here. Mm -hmm. TMU Blue, one of the lower-ranked teams, in fact. Which is surprising, to be it's honest. It's very surprising, as they've been pretty pretty good in all the other seasons that we played them against mm. in the past so it's interesting to see maybe there's been a change up on the roster maybe just a little less focus on the team i, I mean know. that's one of those things about collegiate right it could absolutely turn from one season to another people graduate uh people drop out it could absolutely throw uh a loop into things which is why uh big props are recruiting for constantly being so godlike and filling these yeah. teams up <laughs> and with as quickly as or they they come in right as people are graduating heading on out but taking a look of course at to this group here just kind of go down the list here because it's almost any cc playoff season too there's like one or two games left and you can see we're leading the charge but it's not as dominant as some of the other seasons that we've seen like say nice for example winthrop of course right there columbia college spartans demigods these are all strong teams fisher if they show up are actually fantastic <laughs> um TMU Blue, of course, we're going to see how they are tonight. And even ASU there, um, Arizona State, um, you cannot sleep on that squad. But we'll have to see how TMU, of course, starts things off. A little bit of a rougher season. Like I said, in the past, this has been basically one of our go-to rivals for uh, some nice games even. We've had them even here for Rocket League, for example, when we had that uh, No Man's Land Rocket League Invitational, solid squad in, in that regard. So we know TMU is a good school. <laughs> But we'll have to see what's uh, what's gone yeah, down here this season. They're, they're really good. And one interesting thing I'm seeing here on the board is TMU Blue has more kills than us, but also way more deaths. So you know they're going to be a very aggressive team getting those trades time and time again. So that suggests to me then that their games have been close, to say the least. Like even looking at the round differential, I'm like sure, minus 15 and whatnot. But this says to me that... Uh, like. I don't know, that kind of counteracts itself. Like, that's a rather large, yeah, that's a uh, large difference. round diff, but with those many kills, you would expect um, some longer games, some overtime. So, interesting enough to say the least here. TMU just having a very, very interesting season, but we yeah. can't say <laughs> it's due to their uh, ability to get eliminations. Yeah, definitely. They are there to get kills. They land those headshots, and maybe they're just going to brush up on those objective plays. And we already ran, <laughs> if you were there for our last Valorant stream yesterday, um, then <laughs> we didn't get to go see it go to game. But there were some slight changes with some champs. We're not going to see the new champ uh, ISO yet here in play today. I think that's still 
not tournament legal, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, that's kind of been up in the clouds a little bit. Because I know some leagues, like, say, Nice, for example, for Valorant, there's always that three-week quarantine when a new character or new agent or whatever does come out. But We're NECC, right on that border as well, too. <laughs> yeah, right on, right on the border there as is. And then I think NECC might be a little bit looser in that regard. So I'm not going to guarantee that we won't see it. However, we were kind of talking a little bit in the, in the back about the character that uh, – it's extremely interesting. It seems like a very, very fun character with the ultimate that basically, like I think you explained yesterday, is a, a Mordecai's yep. ult from League of Legends where you force a like an even gulag one-on-one yeah. kind of duel. <laughs> the only <laughs> difference you, advantage you could get there is pretty much just hoping they have a worse gun than you. I guess if they have a shotgun, you have a rifle, that's a very significant advantage. Which is true, absolutely. Disadvantage, but... Speaking of shotguns, we have a change to the judge, lowering that uh, magazine capacity down to five, I believe. Okay. Down from. I like mean, we've seven seen some six. silly stuff with yeah. the judge, so <laughs> fair enough to be honest. Make it a little bit more all in. Definitely make it a little bit harder to get those team kills, and of course, we have minor changes uh, on uh, on Fade and Sky, just making sure they're. Uh, little pets or whatever, <laughs> don't get caught in uh, tripwires, which okay, fair enough. leads into the cypher changes, where the tripwires are much, much, much stronger. You know, they can, okay. I think they reset if they don't get destroyed, they activate quicker, and as for the final change, I believe Raze had her E, her uh, grenade, changed to not be so oppressive. That was pretty much a guaranteed kill. It was better than some ultimates, but now that's been changed. I mean, we've seen some silly but epic and stupid kind of stuff. This throws me back to, I think it was last season where um, the St. Clair uh, Valorant Academy squad and Borge specifically was able to find that team in a corridor with just a mixture of the the fade gravity plus the grenade just wiped the entire team. But here's the specifics here in regards to the um, patch notes as well. And like you're saying, some minor changes going on through and yeah, exactly what you were saying about the trip wires. So it doesn't actually, I guess, mess yep. up the utility <laughs> as badly as maybe it used to. It would be pretty awful if, uh, they did not adjust their, uh, little prowlers and trailblazers there. Cause if those wires don't get destroyed after being triggered, that means that's just total lockdown. If, uh, you just put a trip wire up there. So it totally cancels out those abilities. Been adjusted, so that's not that big of a change. Yeah, probably one of the few reasons why Cypher would have actually been really, really good. But it seems like they're kind of giving them a little bit of love as well on the buff side of things. But quickly, the last one here on the list here, of course, Raze. That's exactly what you're talking yep. about here, the explosion radius. So you don't have as much range to actually um, damage them, per se. Not by much, just very, very tiny. But, I mean, in Valorant, of course, like millimeters can sometimes yep. make the difference it sure feels like <laughs> and just basically kind of toning down the damage a little bit and the blast pack got changed as well not going to be much of a damage tool anymore i don't even really see it be used much as a damage tool, more of a mobility tool. i just see it as the send it tool yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically send your opponent away nice little blast back if they're trying to defuse get mm -hmm. in the way that's a lot of util but not as good if we see rays played a lot so that's a very a good ton, nerf. yeah Raze seems to be a comfortable staple for a lot of players, so I'm sure that these changes will not affect them like a ton, but it's definitely going to be something they have to keep in the back of their mind. So a lot to consider here in Valorant. It's been, it's going to be a good game here today. I'm excited to see it. It's one of my favorite games, but another one of my favorite games here today is League of Legends. Absolutely, it's going to be a good game. We're up against the Bethany Vikings esports. We're going to see what they have to show off here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. Of course, the Saints in their League of Legends run. We're going to see it right here, right now. Uh, thank you to production in the back for pulling this one <laughs> up if right on the dots. But, of course, um, St. Clair Saints, they had the perfect season in terms of record. Nearly a flawless season, but they did drop one map to the team that did end up being second there, uh, Oklahoma. We did end up dropping one map there, but still... Uh, a perfect 7-0 to kind of start things off here this season. However, our opponent, of course, um, Bethany, they are 6-1 and one in the season. And I do believe... Oh, right behind Purdue Yeah, there. right behind Purdue. And that was their only loss there for the season. And Purdue Northwest, I mean, we did see... I know it's a completely different game, but I, I always try to compare if... Um, 
a school is good at one game, sometimes <laughs> it kind of translates into another. You know, they put a lot of focus but on the esports. Yeah, we've seen Purdue Northwest versus our academy squad in Valorant. I think it was last week, and that was like a multiple overtime like slugfest. <laughs> but uh, in League of Legends, I know. I think we've played them in the past, in a past season. It's been kind of convincing, but maybe not so much in this season. But that all being said, that we just cannot sleep on this Bethany Lutheran College squad. Six and one is absolutely nothing to scoff at. Yeah, Bethany is here to put up an amazing fight. And, you know, this current patch still has Kisante being pretty, pretty yeah. busted, <laughs> pretty, very, very, very strong. So that's still something you have to contest with. And it's the day before patch day as well. Of course. <laughs> so we go, we're not going to really cover all of that. I mean, that's, that's probably a good thing, though. Because how many times in the past have we had a, like, a really important match day? all of a sudden get completely butchered up by a patch <laughs> and nobody knows exactly what is truly meta at that point. I feel like that's happened before, especially even in, in playoff season. So yeah, I think that we dodged a bullet there. Yeah, those are always so chaotic, but they're also very fun to watch. Oh, 100%. To see what people are going to try out, try out the new champs, the new maps, the new little minor changes they did to mm -hmm. the game. And I think the next patch is going to be a pretty big one. Absolutely. And one thing I did want to actually quickly take a look off, or as we take a look at the bracket itself here, there we go. So yeah, Bethany in this single elimination bracket, so it is Ooh. going to be slobber knockers over and over again. And this could get really interesting for longtime Saints fans, of course, because in, let's just say, for example, the Saints do end up taking this game, but so does HU. Mm -hmm. HU is Harrisburg University. And one of our old players, Barlow, who was here, I think, about a season, season and a half ago, is one of the main members, I think, on that starting roster of that Harrisburg University squad. Absolute pleasure to work with and going to be looking forward to possibly having the matchup against them in the next round if all goes to plan. But at the same time, you don't want to sleep on Michigan Tech. They're solid all around. But um, with Bethany's um, League of Legends roster, we kind of pointed out something in the back room, which was a little bit odd. One, it looks like they have three <laughs> top lane mains, which is a little bit strange to say the least. That must get switched up for competitive play. But one of their players <laughs> has 324 <laughs> games on Teemo and is basically a Teemo one trick, which is <laughs> not, like you don't ever really see this unless like somebody is trolling in normal games. But legit, like an over 55% uh, win ratio, if I do recall, on Teemo, with the next most played champion being Jarvan at 18. So did we actually see a Teemo oh, ban boy. here today? <laughs> yeah, if the Teemo <laughs> ban comes out, I'm worried for him. You know, <laughs> you have to rely on your secondaries, which I don't think are as practiced. But it's, uh, it's going to be a game. You know, I would say let the Teemo play game one. See, see what yeah, he see has. It. See what the hours put into that result in. <laughs> you never know. It could absolutely be a meta sh uh, shattering pick, to say the least, if you know how to play it right. But um, we talked about League of Legends. We talked about Valorant. We're just going to be starting in just a couple of minutes. I think they're still doing the map vetoes in yep. that regard. But our last matchup that will be starting at 8.30, as well as League, we're going to have, of course, Northeastern versus the Saints in Overwatch. Uh, Nace Star League playoff action. Round one for that is also happening here today. And the Saints, okay, they actually had a flawless wow. Overwatch season where the 7-0, once again, no maps dropped, which was absolutely ridiculous. A massive accomplishment for that Saints Overwatch squad. But this Northeastern squad is not going to be one you want to sleep on as well. They had to fight to get into these playoffs because if I recall correctly, the way this group stage worked was that the, the first place team gets in the playoffs no yep. matter what. But then second and third kind of had the fight for it Ooh. in a last chance qualifier kind of scenario. And Northeastern actually lost the first time. They did go up against Mizzou from a different group here, as we see them on screen now. But uh, they're up against Mizzou, and they lost that one like semi-convincingly. It was a 3-1 matchup, if I recall correctly. But then there was a second LCQ, and they were able to show up big time during that one. They took out Ferris State University. They took out George Mason University. And now they've made the playoffs to play our Saints, as you saw in the results section there, second seed here in this, um, in this group. And you can imagine 
of course, we probably would have been the only loser in the regular season, so they're going to be trying to fire on all cylinders here to try and take us out. Yeah, I'm glad to see them winning. You know, I know they've had some... In other leagues, they had some rough matches here, but it looks like they're on the upswing right now, and they have the work cut out for them there. <laughs> Northeastern, though, you can see they had nearly a flawless run as well, just losing out to Miz Mizu right there. Mm. And uh, that's brutal, but you got to incorporate. Maybe they didn't earn the top spot, but maybe those extra few matches will give them the edge going into this next game. 100%. You got the momentum kind of on your side. You're feeling good after a solid run through um, LCQ2. And you never know with a team like this, it could be in any given Sunday kind of scenario where you catch the Saints slipping in one spot and they should be able to punish accordingly. It's not like the Saints are going to be able to pull out whatever they want to and expect to find victory here. The Saints are going to need to be on um, full force to be able to secure this one and uh, move on into the next round, but do not sleep here on this Northeastern squad. Definitely. They are here to play, and it's going to be a great match to watch. I know with Overwatch to cover any of the changes, we got a little bit of an update here. We have BlizzCon. We have the new, mm -hmm. couple new heroes announced. We have got uh, Malga put in the game. We got Moana. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> the character off Moana just give him machine guns, and I guess you got the character, eh? But, no, he actually looks really, really cool. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing when that character comes into play. Yeah, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting hero, more focused on crits for his sustainability. It's very interesting. Which is weird for a tank. It is very <laughs> weird for a tank. I think he can set you on fire, though, and cause you to do a little bit of damage over time, and then every single hit is a crit after that. So that's how he has to alternate between shooting both guns. Here I am already theory crafting. Can Ash Dynamite stop Sir Crits? I don't know, but that's Gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm already theory crafting. The character's not even out yet. Okay. <laughs> we um. have the weekend, that's it though. <laughs> <laughs> We think we saw Venture as well, a little bit right, of right, right. gameplay, a little bit of a, a drill champ going into the ground. They look very, very fun, but not in the game. We have to wait. We're still in the old patch. So to get through this, you still have to get to these tournaments if you're a competitive player. Oh, absolutely. And I know a lot of people give Overwatch some flack after what we saw happen to the uh, pro scene with Overwatch League kind of being put on pause. But I will reiterate, I say to, the, to all my students here in the production side of things, Overwatch is not dead, it's just healing. They've kind of rushed things to say the least, and um, they're still going to be supporting it, of course. But it just means there's no better time to turn to Collegiate than now, right? So um, we're going to definitely, especially we have it now, we're going to see it a little bit over time as well. Uh, heck, one of our own players was sitting there uh, playing in the World Championships representing Canada, right? So absolutely fantastic at their own, right? Yeah, and with all that said, we will be right back after a quick break. We're just going to get the map sorted, and we'll be right back with Valorant.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first match here in game day at St. Clair College Saints versus Toronto Metropolitan University Blue Team. It's going to be a good match here on Split. It's our first game here in game day. It's going to be a good one. And these team comps looking surprisingly different from each other. We have a Viper, an Astra, a Chamber, a Sky, and a Rays from TMU Blue, and on the side of St. Clair, we're seeing, of course, the Sky and the Rays, but other than that, we have a Cypher, the Omen, and the Breach. Very, very different team comps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely going to be an interesting one. A lot of times we go to a map, and there's kind of the tried and true, where it's the, uh, like, this is your go-to uh, team composition for this one. So the fact that it is so different is going to be interesting as we go on through. Saints going to start off on the defense for us here. And it looks like we are going to see some Cypher play come through here for our Saints. Giza going to be picking up that one. And then, of course, without uh, Horn, Nerf or not, Instinct going to be picking up the Rays. So... For the most part, not really much of a change there for our Saints. Yeah, not too much of a change, and I'm interested to see because I feel like Chamber is usually a more of a defensive. That is odd, actually. Yeah. Pick, and you're starting on attack, so maybe they're just hoping that that works out later. But we see a smoke come out from Seth there, getting the one way early on B. Going to get a little bit of damage there on the Astro. But they're going to rotate over to the rest of mid. And it's a little bit of a face-off. Both teams playing very, very slow for pistol round. The Saints just holding heaven. The rest gathered up there in the middle, and it looks like they're trying to get mid control right now. Okay, go out. Turns for the flash, checks ropes, and he's back on the prowl here. Yeah, if Saints wanted to push on that, I'm kind of glad they didn't, though. Um, sure, the bird did make make contact, but trying to react off it can sometimes be a little bit awkward here. But we do see um, TMU kind of splitting up and making their way towards this A side. Spike is all the way on the opposite side of the map, however. So a little bit awkward there. TMU, I think, really like struggling to kind of figure out what to do early off in this one. Are opting to come back towards center, towards this B side once again. Do they have to push here? They are kind of getting close. Boombot goes for the right clicks and doesn't get it. And the Boombot takes out Caillou there. And Instant going to get one in return on fives and try and push up there and get control back in the hands of the Saints. Left. As now TMU looks to push in the Chaos. Going to flash, gets the grenade and doesn't Ooh. get the kill. As Sean gets another kill on the board with the Ghost. Now it's a 3v4. Yeah, Steph now basically solo defense as of this moment. Got some players from the Saints almost there, but here goes one. Seth finds a pistol shot. The long range pistol shot not going to be there, but Steven is there for the refrag. So one for one, and now two on two to finish this one up. Saints going on through, double dive, and they all go down. Giza there on the Cypher, going to seal the deal here. Pick up the pistol for good measure and take care of that spike. Very patient play from Giza there, waiting for all the chaos to calm down and swoop mm -hmm. in at the last moment after the breach went in there and shook things up. Yeah, a lot of times, too, like you see the one person go first. You you expect the two-pronged attack in that kind of scenario, right? So that two-on-two, two, that uh, one player would be coming from heaven, the other person would be coming from the northern side. And I'm guessing in that situation, they got the one frag immediately turned over, <laughs> expecting the flank, and it did not happen. So good on Giza to kind of play a little bit of mind games there. Um, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we take those. Then introducing, of course, our TMU squad. That is going to be DK, Sean, Stallion, Hunza, and Fives there on the squad. I do not recognize a whole heck of a lot of these players, but I assume they are a solid squad nonetheless, regardless of what their record may say for them. But they are on the back foot after a loss of that pistol round. Going for another similar push as to what they had last time. It did work out. They did get spiked out. Not going to get the kills. Oh. So Seth gets a kill there. The Spectre from long range is going to get the headshot as ha Caillou gets a headshot as well there. Trying to sneak out those sheriffs from out from mid. Push them back. Play the range as it looks like Hunza looks to oh. walk up mid there. Instant gets one as well. And now they're on the prowl, and there's only two left for TMU. Caillou gonna flash himself, gonna have to back off the ropes. Instant gonna get one more. Now the last is in a 1v1 with Caillou here. Five's trying to find a kill or something, upgrade his gun, but not gonna find it as Giza gets a headshot and takes another round for St. Clair College. Yeah, that was definitely gonna be an uphill battle. Solid on TMU to at least get the one, but the Saints not going to give up too much more after that. Still gonna keep all of their weapons and let this snowball continue. Don't have to really buy up too much if they don't necessarily want to. Those Bulldogs are going to yeah, handle just fine for now. 
I'm going to say, I don't think there's much changes on the Bulldog. So I guess it's just a nice, cheap gun to have if you just want to press the advantage, just conserve that economy. I mean, I love three-round bursts. So, like, personally, even if I have the Phantom and the Va Vandal <laughs> oh. available, I still go for the Bulldog, but I'm also <laughs> told I'm crowded at the game. So, I mean, that's, that's probably something to keep in mind of. But... Uh, Let's see if the Saints can maybe pull off another one. They are, in theory, minorly outgunned. Wow. But the one-for-one one trade to start things off here, as Fives finds Caillou, but Instinct is going to trade him right back out. They found the pick on A, but it looks like they're going to rotate towards B, try and go for a little bit of a disruption here as Giza and Saf hiding in the smokes, pushing into B garage there as Stallion pushes up at the AK. Uh, might find a kill, and he gets uh, killed out by Giza, and that's a nice upgrade. And that is Spike down. They have Spike control in their hands, and now... TMU is in a tough spot. Now they have to play attack and try and get this spike back. And Sean and moving through the smoke, trying to use the chaos with the dog. We're not going to find much. No concussions found with it. As Sean needs to find something through the smoke, but he's going to get brought down to 10 HP by instinct. The Sky Hill's going to come out. They know they're all there. They're just going to try and buy time, but the <laughs> cage isn't going to buy much. And there's the grenade. Not going to do as much damage as it usually does. But Hansa going to try and move in there, try and find a quick. Oh, Lake, but he doesn't find it as all the <laughs> abilities are coming out as Giza finds a headshot as well. Hey, yo, is this Overwatch? Like, how many abilities are being thrown out at this time here? So much on screen right now. But as you can see, with that spike getting dumped so early, the Saints just all then collapse directly on it, hold their crossfires. And honestly, if you're TMU at this point, you just bought your Phantoms, you just bought your Vandals, just run. You're not going to outgun a 2v4. At least, like, 99 times out of 100. The Saints are going to go hunting, but this one might be over. Yeah, they don't even need to. It's only a 2v3. It's actually kind of winnable if there wasn't the lack of time there. As TMU gets taken out again, huh? but Sean going to try and make it expensive for them. Oh. As he gets a double kill there at the okay. end, making that a triple, leading the kill board for TMU with five kills. Oh, honestly, good there by Sean. Just able to do some rather serious economic damage to prevent the major snowball from happening. The Saints are still going to be able to full buy. We see Vandals all now in the pocket there for the Saints, so they're going to be sitting pretty, but it could have been much worse. And you may notice in the bottom left of there, it says live on twitch.tv slash SaintsGamingCA2. Valorant may be the only game happening right now, but in just a couple of minutes time, of course, game day is going to be covering League of Legends as well as Overwatch. So if you are a dedicated Valorant watcher make sure you have that Saints Gaming CA2 channel open on another tab ready to go because we will be wow. switching back and forth as one. we see instinct getting a nice little headshot on fives and Sean got a pick right off the gate uh -oh. on B and there's the showstopper there gonna try and go over <laughs> the cypher tripwire oh, nobody there. home but they all left they heard Scatter. who's knocking they left the home and now they're gonna get out of there Sean bursts on the scene using all his util Kai gonna try and flash let's press him and oh. Instinct with a big showstopper. Oh, Hunts are going to get one, and Steven going to get another as well. And now Tal Sally in there. Oh. Try to take the long range engagement as Caillou and Steven take it all out there. Oh, this Italian had the right idea, but unfortunately missed the first initial shot. And honestly, in these gunfights, if you don't hit that first bullet, you may very well lose that gunfight. Unfortunate there for the side of TMU. The bleeding is going to continue to happen here. Doing a tiny little bit of economic damage, like Instinct forced to buy up, and same here with Seth. But as we can see in the economic the, the credits line there, while the Saints are sitting there with multi-thousands, with the exception of Instinct, because I believe Instinct just bought up for everybody yep. <laughs> we see like tmu with only like hundreds if not 50. yeah they are scraping the bottom of the barrel for guns here but check this the couch is their last <laughs> little hurrah we need to start winning rounds here because the four lead oh? is not looking good but fives is looking good with a kill off the bat and steven gonna get a headshot though in retaliation now oh, he's fives hurt. there in the corner he is in a bad spot a shred of health yeah, left steven gonna clean that up with the double early on in the game now it's a 3v4. Kaiyu on the prowl with the dog. Not going to find much, though. And if breath of them are mid and a little bit split up, the Astra again in the back with the spike. Just playing it safe, waiting for the opportune time to move. Yeah, so absolutely winnable still here for the side of TMU. Just have to watch themselves as they crawl through middle. It is, of course, covered. Do see Seth right there, ready and waiting. And I think they might have had a little bit of a hunch onto it as he now takes center off towards the right-hand side towards that A site. 
granted two saints are there steven as well as our sky i believe is right there and caillou sure enough gonna find the one nice and quick right the through wall. the wall why don't you nicely done steven from the 3k and one more by caillou to seal the deal let's make that five in a row here for our saints very clean around from the saints and steven very very good round for him he's now the kill leader on the board he got those i think he got two to three kills that round and he set his team up for many kills as well great plays all around from him and now he's leading in cash with seven thousand dollars and it's looking like tmu blue is a little bit strapped for cash like we said earlier going with the sheriffs <laughs> with a single guardian to usher them in to the site yeah, this is where things start to get a little bit messy here. Sean going to try to be the hero here with that Guardian, like you hadn't mentioned. But we see three Saints. I don't care how good you are. You can't one-tap three people at the same time. And just like that, mow them on down. Triple kill here for Instinct. Oh just immediately breaching on through. That is definitely the, uh, <laughs> the arms race in the Saints' favor really coming through. And the fact that the Saints able to get those shots nice and quick, not letting those Deagles get any value. Yeah, Stallion the Lone Ranger there at the, <laughs> the sidearm, but not going to do much against the rifle as Seth cleans it up. Another flawless round for the Saints. And, you know, they are 6-0 and all right now, just wiping this quarter in this half. Yep, we're going to see the timeout fair. from TMU yep. start. Very, very fair as you want to stop this momentum. Yeah, so this is going to be extremely awkward now for TMU because not only, like, have that has the snowball kind of affected them off the pistol round and going into the second round. It's just kind of been all downhill from there already. And we saw it with the, the economy saints. They can basically throw three, four rounds away at this point and still have enough for vandals and phantoms. And it is a brutal situation to be in here from TMU forcing themselves into an uphill battle extremely early in this game. Yeah, they are. They are just, I think they're playing a little bit too passive. They got the spike down the first round. That was pistol. You can't really base your whole game plan mm -hmm. around how it went in pistol round. Because I don't think it's been working out. Like, they've been getting the spike down. They've been waiting for the opportune moment to snake by and get the spike down. But they just have not been taking the correct fights. They don't have map control. They're a little bit scattered and a little bit apprehensive to make decisive moves. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever gotten yourself into the situation where you know you're going up against a strong opponent and then you give them too much respect. Yep. That kind of feels like what's what was happening at least early. And now because of the way the, these rounds have gone, um, the team is kind of forced to stay that way. And this time by, they did buy up here. So they are going to try and make a play here in this one to maybe stop the bleeding, get some cash in their pocket, maybe get themselves around. And they're going to be aiming towards that B, maybe the center, to try and make a push. Ooh, Instinct going to get a headshot off the bat there from Heaven. And Decay going to get one in a bit. Return, oh. Mikai going to get one, and Steven going to get one. But Sean going to get the last lap. But the Saints are up a player now. Steven going to try and concuss them back. Hold them off from B, Heaven. And while they did get quite a few kills here, they don't really have much pressure to push. They're just stuck here mid, waiting for the smoke to go down, waiting for another push. But the Saints are on the fence. They don't have to push. And mm. they're just looking for the right moment. This is painful, too, because Saints have all the utility in the world to actually just shut this one down. TMU bought up, but there's three ultimates on deck here for the side of St. Clair. As soon as they get a hunch, heck, if they don't have a hunch, just pipe uh, the uh, Cypher up ultimate off and then spoil everything and all of a sudden TMU is on the back foot once again they're going to try and creep on through and actually the Saints did get a little bit aggressive looking to uh, hunt the TMU players down this could allow for the TMU squad to get into a post plant position and force the Saints to take gunfight the Saints getting very very aggressive here all on the prowl here with the cypher just holding it back and now they have a feeling they know where oh, they're running now. two of them are in heaven and the rest are in the back Steven and Seth go up to heaven here to try and find an opening. Here comes. Lots of coverage from the Astro. There's the ultimate. Going to be double concussed there. Oh! Sally going to find a kill, but Steven going to find one in return. It's all down to Sean now. He has his work cut out for him. He needs a double kill. Oh. And he's, uh, he sees that at the last moment, but it's lights out as soon as he turns around. That is another round for St. Clair. 7 Oh, continuing the flawless win streak. Then they only had to use the one ultimate for that as well. I mean, I know the Doman ultimate wouldn't have necessarily been very valuable in that scenario, but they didn't have to blow the Cypher ult, so they'll have that for another one. Sky or Caillou there has 
uh, their ult as well ready to go. So, um, in terms of like, in terms of momentum, in terms of positioning, Sinclair is looking unstoppable right now in this defensive half. And I'm sure TMU is just waiting for halftime to try to bring this back to an even playing field. But if this continues how it's been going, you don't have much of a chance if it's 12-0. But there is something that might turn the tides of the battle. The Chamber Alt, an op on the field. Doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank, it'll be there. And now, Saints have to actually play a little bit carefully in range. As Sean has a frenzy here, playing through ropes, playing very aggressive, hoping his team lines up in time. It looks like they're going to go for an A push. And it's going to be explosive. I mean, they're going for the A push, but at the same time, spikes all the way down on the, on the left side. They're more towards B. So I don't know what the plan of attack here is for TMU, because this is not the first time we've seen them do this, where all of them were towards A, but then all of a sudden the spike holder is all the way towards B. It's going to finally start making their way. I think they feel like they finally have some room, but with Instinct showing and taking care of um, uh, Huns as well, getting the Tour de Force off of the uh, the field. So no um, all reliable op there for you. The big gun that you had is all gone. Yeah, and, uh, there's a snake bite there, pushing Instinct back a little bit. Now they have a little bit of a heavy control now. He's uh, on the site, going to see the blast pack. They're going to back off again, and they don't take the gunfight very well. As Giza gets one, and Instinct gets another. Five, so going to even the play and field with the Guardian. Oh. Stallion going to get one as well. He's going to clean that up, though. And now it's all down to Stallion here, and all he has is a sheriff to his name. And here he is, whipping out the gun, the side piece. And we'll see what he can do with it in the 1v3. Kyu going to flash him out, and he doesn't have much time. He has a spike, but he's not going to rotate. Yeah. He's trusting gun gunfight, and Seth going to get the headshot and clean it up. I mean, fair enough. At that point, you're just trying to get some value, right? Just trying to get one more gun off the table here for the Saints. Not like it matters, it just gets bought right back anyway. Anybody could buy basically two full loadouts at this point here. Saints just sitting on top of the world in a very dominating pace here so far. Eight unanswered rounds. None of them, I would argue, really even that close. There may have been one, maybe two or three rounds ago where it was that two on two that um, could have been doable, but Giza kind of clutched it up. But again, just TMU still stuck on the back foot. They are, they're pushing in. Oh no. Same person has a spike there. Instinct gonna find one with a grenade though already, even with the nerf. Sean gonna find one in retaliation. And Kai gonna keep everyone oh, healed oh. up. And Instinct gets one, Five's gonna get another. And there it is, Stallion the 1v1 here. A little bit of a gunfight gonna get flashed out, gonna ro rotate back. Now, it's a 3v3, even playing field. This could be TMU's chance. It's been a nasty gunfights all around. But that smoke will calm the battlefield for a second. SF. Perhaps a paranoia. There it is. Yeah, the smoke, another paranoia. The wall, there's no vision anywhere to be seen. Hun's gonna get another. Now, TMU has the player oh. advantage. We gotta take the gunfight here. Fives, push in with this team. Gonna reload the gun here as the Omen rotates back to screens. And Cypher, looks like he was gonna go for a big sewer flank, but he's realizing, well, now they're gonna rotate through mid, so he prepares for a gunfight there, setting up tripwire, setting up everything he needs as the rest of TMU is on the prowl through having to get oh, trapped on a tripwire. There's the cage as well. He hears it, and Giza is ready for this fight. He's prepped. All his traps are out, and they have walked in to the Home Alone house. He's ready to play. I mean, at this spot, though, they were able to get cover to get this spike down, so it is on the Saints to take a uh, short-handed fight until now. One goes out, Stallion goes down immediately after the fact, so it's all up to Huns to try and make the one-on-two happen. Was not in position to really make this one happen. Finds one, can they find the second? Has up to half, and he gets it! Big play there from Huns to try and turn this one around. And the triple kill from his, him as well. <laughs> Much needed round there, 8-1. Right. If they continue the momentum here, they can maybe turn this into an 8-4. It's not impossible, an 8-4 feels much more winnable than any other scoreline, really. Okay. Let that be the start of maybe a little bit of momentum here for uh, TMU. That's exactly what they needed, and I feel like um, Huns there was just having such a slow start. Sometimes it just takes one good round like that to kind of I mean, we've seen it before. You go from the bottom fraggers and all of a sudden, 
you just go on an absolute killing spree and now all of a sudden you're at the top. Has a little bit of ways to go still. Don't want to say that's for sure going to happen, but you're definitely feeling good after that. I want to say an interesting pick to rush B after they know the Cypher has set up there every single round, but maybe they'll learn and try and take Spike up with them as well. They've kept the Spike in the back every single time and it's not worked out for them. But the one round that they didn't do that worked out great. Mm. Maybe we'll see something interesting here. And they have four alts to play with as well. So this should be looking to be a good turnaround for TMU Blue. And the last round as well, it went so well, I feel like, because everybody was all in on the exact wow. same side. There was no Show split. Stopper. Yeah, he's Show. caught in a tripwire, though, and he gets concussed as well. Oh, and geez. there's the grenade. CC galore, but he manages to get out of it. Doesn't find a kill in the Astro Wall. Going to protect him out there as they rotate back. The Seeker is going to find a couple there in the back. He's going to flash out. And there's the Viper Pit as well. They're throwing everything at the wall here as Sean gets a oh kill. Another flash. Insect going to find one. Decay going to find another. And in the fog of war here, Okay. Kai gets killed there by Decay getting a double kill. And now he's going to find the kill and he's going to pop it off of his own. He's going to locate them and he sees them all in the smoke. He's going to get one more ping and he's looking to find kills here. He finds one, he swings one, he's trying to find the Viper. Oh. He's going to find it. Sean going to be the last one here. And Sean going to find a kill and Inks is going to rotate back out. It's all down to instinct. But he gets taken oh out by gosh. Sean with a grenade and that's another round for TMU Blue. Okay, team, which abilities are we going to use? Yes. <laughs> yes was the answer. We just threw the entire kitchen sink at that B site. And you're completely on this up. It's like, okay, the Cypher's been setting up there this entire time. Why are you going to push it? If you just say, like, you're right. <laughs> screw I the Cypher. Let's just all in it anyway. They're not going to expect this in the slightest. And it seemed like the Saints had a bit of a hunch of, of what was going on, but they did not fully commit to it until the point where all five members of TMU were already on B site, Spike going down, and yeah. made it extremely difficult to try and get through. Sure, they got a couple of eliminations, but through all of the smoke, the Viper pits and everything going on, it was just not doable. Nasty Trey coming out there in the mid. The play's pretty low. Kai goes to the dog to try and get a little bit of info, but the smokes are going to cover it all up there. He's going to go on the prowl play. Very aggressive. Looking for a pick. Going to blast back out. Go back. Safety. And now we're back to a little bit of a neutral game. And it looks like we're gearing up for an A push. And of course, I'm taking a peek over to the side here, checking out our other observers. It does look like game day is about to be getting started here on the Saints Gaming CA stream. So if you, I just want to repeat again, if you are specifically here for Valorant and want to see the game from start to finish, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Saints Gaming CA2 to get uninterrupted Valorant action. Otherwise, by all means, stick with us here and we'll get you all the action from across all Saints games here tonight. As we now see, attack on the A site. Yeah, the attack is happening on the A site. It's all Giza here to hold the line and he's gonna find one from behind box he finds two Ooh. from behind box does he find a third but steven's gonna find two as well oh. and now it's all down to hunter he's gonna go up the ropes find kayo to meet his maker as it's nine to two it's looking very st clair sided as we get into our game day and now we have overwatch northeastern university versus st clair college and the action has already started with st clair holding the line having the point here, if you just want Overwatch, you can get Saints Gaming CA4. I got all the channels basically on full force tonight here. And of course, that's going to be Northeastern wow, University versus St. Clair. And we just saw an absolute massacre happening there. Are they at their spawn already? Looks like it. So we're going back <laughs> to Valorant where we see a little bit of a comeback maybe happening here. They have two rounds, but the Saints overwhelming gluing the last round with nine an instinct. Hold the line here with the grenade. Going to push up, play very aggressive. He does. He know there's a Viper on the other side of that box. He doesn't see it, but oh. he gets a kill anyways. Five's going to trade it out. Steven going to find one as well. And now they are pushing up. They have to play a little bit back now as their ranks have been filed down to three. And St. Clair with a steady four. I can low-key hear Amanda in the background screaming, 9-3 curse, 9-3 <laughs> curse, <laughs> hoping that it happens. It's right around the corner. This is still very doable here for Toronto Metropolitan, but of course, having to play the short-handed game for now, taking their time the through line. center. That's just such a long-range blind there from yeah. all the way on B, heaven on the edge, right to mid. They know where they are. They just have to play it slow and steady as Steven's on a box. He's waiting for the ropes push, but they're going to push towards Wait B here. It. 
three of them, all positions. Oh, gosh. Kai is going to find a couple bullets, but not going to find the kill. Steph going to set up the blind. Kai gets a kill, though. Spike is down. That's a wow. double kill. Hanza, it's all down. To Sean there as Seth moves in for the kill in the little bit of the cheeky spot on the box. 10-2, very steady lead for Saints. You can never get too complacent with checking your corners, but to be fair, you have like four different spots you have to check trying to get out of that garage. So uh, good on the Saints there to take advantage of that. No 9-3 curse today. It is going to be 10-2 going in through the half. Saints now just a couple of rounds away on this attack from taking game number one. Making quick work of TMU as of right now, but let's see if the side switch does anything different. Because you're kind of mentioning a little bit earlier that this team composition from the side of TMU does seem to favor defense a little bit more, which is really awkward why they picked it when they were attacking first. Yeah, that is definitely the case, so maybe they can make something work here, but they're going to have to make it work for eight rounds in a row to even the score line. Definitely a tall task. Whereas if St. Clair wins this pistol round, it's looking very dire. That's looking to be Woo. a 12 2 situation, as it looks like the Saints easily holy, holy take side control there. as the rest of them are just waiting there in heaven, waiting oh, to take gosh. a fight, waiting for the spike to go down. Seth waiting for the blind. He knows it's coming. He knows they're going to push. He sees the flash come out. He sees it. He's going to just be patient there. Wait in the acid as Fives looking Jeez. a little too cautious here. They need to take a fight and they need to take one soon as time is ticking. They are on the back foot here. Fives is going to find a kill with the, with the right click. Oh. See if we're going to get the double right click there. The triple kill with the classic. And Giza can find one and Sean going to find another. But Steven 4K. blows out the game with a 4K. The round, rather, but it's looking like the game as it's 11 2. I mean, it might as well be the game at this point, to say the least, with how this game's been going. And we know after that pistol round, you can almost like 80% of the time kind of guarantee that next round goes into your favor as well. Which means by the next chance that Toronto Metropolitan can put up a fair fight in terms of this arms race, instead of their, in terms of their loadout, it's going to be match point. And I don't care how good you are, that is such a stressful position to kind of put yourself through. But we do see the Saints buy one really quick buy up to the Vandal, and everybody else is looking to run and gun. Yeah, they're going to press that advantage of range and guns. They know they can win the gunfights as, wow, Ooh. Hunt has to go out of there with the grenade, even though it's nerfed. It's still a brutal thing to see. And Inta gets a kill as well. Okay. Hunt's going to get a kill. The Frenzy Retaliation gets traded out. 4v4. Still winnable there. Five's going to get one as well. And now the Saints are on the back foot with only two of them left. The Stelling gets one. And now this might be Toronto Metropolitan's comeback. Is Caillou going to get a kill? Even the playing 3v2. There's the grenade. He's in a corner here. Options are limited. Back up against the wall. He needs to find something here. Steven but here with the Vandal. Not going to find wow. much. Hunza gets one with St Stallion in sync. Going to take that round, which is very unexpected. And they gave them a free Vandal as well. Absolutely incredible stuff here from TMU. I was literally just saying, it seems like 80% of the time you have, you take that pistol round, you take the next round, and the team says, shut up, Caster, watch us go. And it just comes in clutch there. They did, instead of going up for pistols, a couple of them did go for them, uh, them submachine guns, and it did show some rather solid value. And if anything, now it's going to force the Saints to go and try to find some value with these, uh, with these sheriffs and TMU might be able to actually start snowballing something off of this. I think this might be it if TMU can press this advantage, oh. but ooh, Vive's gonna catch Instinct off guard through the smoke there, and they're just spraying it down. They have main control. They can play the range against these Sheriffs. Caillou looking very confident, trying to find a peak. Seth's gonna find one, okay. though. In the playing field gonna get flashed up. They know they're mid now, and now they're gonna press the advantage. Spectre going to pepper them over and over. Sean going to find there one. The K going to find another. They're just dropping like flies now, but it looks like they got one of them real low. Must have been a little bit too far for the Sheriff. Can have one shot, but a little too far. That's 142 to the head. Sean going to find one in the back, but he's going to get taken out. Looks like the Saints are moving with tactical precision here, taking it slow and steady, waiting for the lineups to the head with those crosshairs. And Steven and Giza setting up on defense and... They have spike control. Mm -hmm. They're going to lay it down A, and <laughs> it's going to be tough. But we've seen how Toronto Metropolitan gets easily disrupted here when the pressure is on. I mean, 
they they may not have the guns, but the Saints have the positioning here. Then they have to run through Giza. One tap. Take care of DK. They have to come from the skies. They get one more. There's one on one left. A pistol versus the AR. Can Saints pull this one off? Giza looks for the shot. Is not going to be able to seal the deal. The valiant efforts there on that thrifty attempt. And they take care of pretty well everybody. But Hans is going to shut that one down and get TMU on the board yet again. TMU looking to keep up the reverse sweep, but they only have one more round left to lose. You can keep playing like that. You might be able to tie the scoreboard, but you know something's gotta give eventually here. But like we said before, the, the comp is working out much, much better here on the defense. They've already mm -hmm. scored the same amount of points they got on attack already. Flip back over to Overwatch. Looks like Northeastern actually won that last round, even though Saints oh. had very strong control in the beginning. And Northeastern yeah. gonna get pushed off the point now, and Saints looking to flip and keep control, looking to make this go to map or the map three. <laughs> I don't check the point three of the first map. <laughs> yeah, I definitely know which of the there. Map but, uh, I do, let's see. Right, there. Yeah, it just goes to show how quickly things can flip. We see the Saints dropping that uh, first round in Overwatch after getting a solid team fight. And we also see now the Saints, now that they're on this attacking side, their pockets are uh, completely empty. They're the ones going to the couch trying to look for some change to try and get some, uh, some decent loadouts here. But now Saints off the start here, kind of hovering around center. Little bit of a split formation to kind of start things off, but not really committing to anything. Just trying to get as much information as possible. As we do see the Rays and Caillou here, Instinct moving up as well. Looking to maybe start to make a push, but if they go towards that B site, they are going to be in for a world of hurt. It looks like there's three right there. Yeah, they are making good use of this split push, trying to create as much confusion as they can in TMU Blue, but they're not going to find it as they're just holding stalwart, holding their angles. And they know they're on defense now. They're not panicking. They're playing very, very mm -hmm. well. Yeah, if they were, were hoping for a defensive play style, a, a passive play style, the you, you peek me and I uh, sh shut you down kind of play style, I mean, they've been doing it all right so far. As we see Hines again, just dodges the brimstone stuff. Well, not the brimstone stuff, but the breach, the breach stuff, exactly. Um, takes care of it, and now they do get first blood here into this one. Steven nearly getting for World of Hurt. Instinct is just gonna send it. Does go down, but it allows for the rest of the Saints to get onto the site. Ultimate gonna be coming wow. down here from the breach. Does it stun anybody up? I don't really think so. Not this time. Sean now takes care of Seth. Two on two now that Caillou's kind of evened up the battle. Stallion looking for the Saints, and Steven turns and birds and gets the secure here on this one, giving Saints now match point. Amazing play from St. Clair there. <laughs> it looked a very, very close play there, but that's what you need to do. They know they can stay calm and collected in those clutch situations. That was a mess. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit of a mess, but that's what you need to do. You need to create a chaotic situation because they've seen time and time again that Timmy Blue just seems to crack under the pressure mm -hmm. sometimes when it's in those do or die situations. So making the, running the clock down to the last few seconds. While a risky play seemed to work out, and now they're on match point. Yeah, 100% correct. Seems like that methodical play, the methodical defense, it seems that TMU's got that part locked down. But just like you said, you throw a little bit of chaos into the mix, and all of a sudden, everything just falls apart. And now, Saints, for the most part, all in towards that B site, looking to breach on through. Expect Caillou to lead the charge here in a second. Wow. Actually, a little bit of a rough one there for Stallion. And here comes the cavalry. Fires on through. Giza takes care of Sean as well. With so many Saints on point, it's just a matter for the spike goes down. Three on five. TMU, what you got? Yeah, it's all on the line here. They have Chamber Alt on board here. That's a free op. They can take some good angles here. But Caillou going to find one as well. Now it's just a 2v5. Saints looking to make this a flawless round as Instinct here in heaven trying to spray it down through the smoke, trying to find anything. Kai going to find one, and now it's all done to Hans, and that uh. is it. St. Clair taking it all home with Steven. Getting a flawless round. Look at that. The Saints played amazingly there, taking it all home here today in game one. Okay, jump, jump scare there for Huns to save the least. Just popping out of the smoke and immediately finding two Saints. There is nothing you can do in that regard. But of course, Saints game day does continue um, as we wait for the next round to start here for Valorant. We can take a look, of course, at the draft that's happening on the side of Saints. That is that, or excuse me, that um, 
NECC, NACE Star League <laughs> playoff match leagues. I Definitely. struggling a little bit here. We uh, we have the draft on the right, <laughs> and we have point three here on the bottom left. The draft for St. Clair College is going to be Syndra, Jarvin, Thresh, Zaya, and Malphite. And do we see the Timo ban from the Saints? We don't see it. No. But we also don't see the Timo pick on the side of Bethany, with it being Oriana, Senna, Tom Kench, Jax, and Jace. And I think it's okay. Pretty. I think we're going to see. Uh, you know, the two in the middle there, could be jungle, could be top. I've seen Jack's yeah. top a lot lately. Yeah, that's the awkward thing, especially even which player is playing what, because we did take a look a little bit earlier uh, prior to the game happening. It seemed like there was a few people that can play top, a few people that can kind of play jungle. So who was who? Um, who is who? We're not 100% sure. But of course, as this game day is going on through, um, League will be starting momentarily. So if you do want to stick with League of Legends, that's going to be Saints Gaming CA3 to get un uninterrupted League. Saints Gaming CA4 will have your uninterrupted Overwatch, with the exception of the pause that is currently going on right now in the game. So that's why we're not switched on over just yet. But this does at least give us a breather to take a look at this uh, team composition. Definitely. And I just want to run through the bands real quick for St. Clair College. Of course, we banned the Cassanti. St. The Rel ban a lot now. We also see the mm -hmm. Seraphim ban. We have the Gwen ban and the Orn ban as well. We've seen them have trouble against a couple Orns in the past few matches, but you know, with the 7 0 win streak, you know, they're looking very, very good. Yeah, take no a, a good win streak out of a 7 0. I mean, take no chances, right? Orn's one of those characters where it's, you don't have to really win your lane. You can just um, take your time and just start. Um, getting items for your entire team and making everybody just that much stronger. And similar to what you were saying too, Rel, especially after Worlds kind of started, we saw her pick rate and ban rate kind of pick up a little bit, considering she went from support to jungle, apparently. So that is going to be interesting as this game does get started shortly. But the pause is over. We are back here with some Overwatch action here in the NACE playoffs. As it looks like this did end up going to a round three here in game number one with a team fight looking like it's just about to get started. Northeastern here in the lead with the point control looking to make it 90% in a few seconds here. St. Clair not far behind him with 60% on the board nearly. And Crime going to do a lot of damage there. Being contested right now. Just trying oh. to find a kill. And there it is. Booping the Genji off. But he's a mobile champ. He's going to make it down to the health pack there and stay in the fight. But there's 99. Someone needs to touch and contest. And there we see it. Now St. Clair needs to flip the site and fast. A smash. Sashi's going in there. Playing very, very well here. There is the Joker Queen ult. Crime going to get a melee kill though in the <laughs> chaos. As Frisco finds one. Frisco finds two. The Saints are being repelled. They're trying to struggle on and stick oh. with it. But the sound barrier keeps them in the game here. Squeak trying to champion this as the Joker Queen. Not going to find much though. As can't find a pick through all this chaos. It's hard to land those shots. He's sticking on though. He's staying alive. Oh, no. Almost lands the ult, but he gets taken out by Frisco there. But the rest of his team is not far behind to try and hold out the match here. And there's our pause. We have the delay. Oh. It's a short pause. Wow. How do okay. we think this is going to go? Okay, so... Um Frisco there on the side of Northeastern, the Junker Queen, fired off that ultimate right oh, through right everybody. And that was absolutely nutty. And Scoop there on the Lucio also just saved the fight. And now we hear the, sh the shots firing in the background. Here we go, still in overtime. Oh, wow. This is getting nutty. Razor does have the Dragon Blade available if they can get to the point. They do manage to actually flip this thing. Emergency Hammond coming on through. Hamster rolling on in. And it's going to allow for the Saints alongside the rest of them to get this one through just at the last little bit. Scoop knows what's up. He knows what's <laughs> nice. And the Saints able to hang on by a thread. What a comeback there. That is what they needed to happen. Last second flip of the point. Now it's all down to the Saints to hold it here. Shot. Shashi. Shashi here has the Dragon Blade at the ready. Frisco also has overheld here. here. He's moving in. Crime going to get a double kill there. Razor going to get two with the Dragon Blade. And Frisco going to keep pushing the advantage, trying to put, break Saints' defense here. As it's all chaos here. Absolutely. On the point. As we get closer and closer to 90%, Squeak on the ball. And when there? Great to contest. Going to get oh. another kill. And no one's there to contest the Tracer. Oh. Just so, or that's a Sombra. Sombra, yeah. too <laughs> slow there as Saints. Take map one. 
Okay, that was a scrap and a half there, and it did not look good initially initially but frisco this might be the ultimate that i was talking about if it is from game number three no this was actually earlier in the round it looks like going on an absolute tear with the shotgun through the window does not matter you are in the wall and gone You're all the way down through as we see saints they might be cool calm and collected right now but with how close that game was you know they must be shaken up a little bit Definitely, that was a last second Hail Mary there. They contested, they held out for so long there. The sound barrier, all the alts came out and they are doing their best. <laughs> Thank you very much for the picture, you know, just recording it for the memories. You know, this is what it's all about. There he is. <laughs> I mean, Red X is always like not fearsome of the camera, always playing it up. It's alongside some of the other Saints here as well. Always good to see. But honestly, that could have been so messy when that final fight happens because both Genjis had their Dragon Blades, but um, Razor actually dropped extremely early. It did rely on a lot of the other Saints to kind of pull through and deal the damage in that situation. But thankfully, they were able to pull it off. And now as we hop into the league game, just getting started here on Saints Gaming CA3. Yeah, here we are. And that is quite an interesting uh, picks there. As we do see Jax in jungle, I usually see him top, but I know he's very viable jungle. Jax has got a rework quite recently here. He's a very, very strong champ. As we see, it's a very typical game. Gonna get a little bit of pokes here happening in the bot lane already. And looks pretty, pretty normal here to me so far here. I mean, I'm gonna take advantage of this situation right now. We've had an insane Valorant game, an insane yep. Overwatch game. If we get to slow it down for just a second here with League of Legends, I am completely nice fine with this. As we take a look here at uh, the lineup. So sure enough, the one member that I was thinking was the Teemo one trick is not actually on the roster here today for this side of Bethany. Instead, I think that's uh, Yune in the mid lane going to be taking their spot. So got McFlurry Demon up in the, the top lane there for Bethany. Gwise, Yune, Dog2, and Beast Showmaker for our opponents. And of course, our starting lineup for the Saints. Bakery Boy, Maddie, Zephyrod. He actually went back to Zephyrod. Okay, there we go. Rock right. Boom and Lonzo Heaton, the coach as well as the support player here in this game. Yes, very. What do you think uh, What do you think of these team comps so far? Okay, so Saints, it looks like they just want to send it. Looking at the side of things, anytime you pick a Malphite, I assume you just want to essentially give up your early game and just get ready for team fights. As we hang on a second, we got a bit of a fight in the bot lane. Wow, big fight going on right here. As they get oh. first blood here, the Thresh gets the kill though. A little bit of a misplay, but that's nonetheless a it. major advantage for St. Clair College as things are moving very, very well for them in the bot lane. As we move over to the top lane, we see our jungler, Maddie. Prep for a big gank here. McFlurry Demon getting very, very low on the Jace here as Bakery Boy pushes in. And now Maddie slaying McFlurry Demon. Call him the Demon Slayer. Call him Tanjiro. Call him whatever you want. But I'm just going to call him good as he gets a major advantage here in the game with St. Clair getting two early kills and securing the nice early game lead as Gweiss gets scuttle in retaliation <laughs> yeah take care of the scuttle nice and quick here and now off of the start here saints aren't looking too shabby getting themselves nearly a 1k gold lead right off the start and we'll have to see if they can ab abuse that bot lane lead as we see oh, the gate down in the mid lane zephyrot was almost in trouble but there's alonzo with the hook, yeah, there it is. The fights are happening. Gwen getting very, very low. The Syndra peppering him for the orbs. Oh, Another Jesus, hook would end it here. And now the Tom Kench is here. We're, it's early game, but we're getting a big team fight here in the middle. These teams are here to play. And now things have cooled off. They're not. They're going to back off. Secure the second scuttle, and the Saints are just going to carry this lead. They know that Bethany is currently Bethany Esports looking. <laughs> To even the playing field, they need a kill, they need it quick, or else they're just going to be behind for quite a bit in this game. And because they didn't get anything out of that gank, they're going to be down in CS as well. So, more and more, they're getting disadvantaged. May have been down in CS, but they did kind of let the Senna just gather some of their uh, like solo experience, I think. I don't think the Senna was a part of that engagement. If so, I'm like, I very well could be wrong, but. You're completely right. They tried to make a play knowing that they were behind and they got essentially nothing for it. 
which is going to make things a little bit more awkward, especially come time for the Rift Herald or that first Dragon, whichever may happen first for these teams. But as we do see the Valorant game getting back underway as well, if you do want to stick with League of Legends, Saints Gaming CA3 is where it's at. If you want to see all the links and whatnot, get all the tabs open, exclamation mark streams in the Twitch chat. We'll bring it all up as we see a massive fight here for the Saints. Yes, I'm getting a double kill, two kills in retaliation for KMU. As we get a record oh. from Giza, he's going to get a kill there. Sean, though, going to shut that down. It's all done to Steven here with the ghost. He finds one oh. in the last. It's just a shred of health, but when it's two ghosts up against one another, it could be anyone's game. It's a Sage, though, so the regen could be very, very useful here, especially in pistol rounds. A Stallion going to get the plant here as the Saints are starting on defense here on Lotus with TMU on attack. And Stallion now just has to play the waiting game and wait for Seth to make his approach. And it'll almost be an even fight, too, if 20 seconds could go by or so. The Sage, I believe, will have her heal once again to make this a full um, full health battle. But we do see Steven is right here, sees the spike. Where's the Sage going, looking for the Southern attack? Actually, Steven, what are you going to try and do? Faking it? Going to try to get the attention of the TMU Sage. So far, it looks like it's working. They're making their way over. Going to have to try and stick it now. Kind of waited too long. I see the Sage. She's crawling on through. The spike is ticking down. What do you do? You have to stick it at some point. Gets the elimination. Is this enough time to do so? Yes, it is enough time to do so. Steven clutching that one up from what it looks like was going to be brutal. Yeah, the Saints, they're getting destroyed there in complete dis disarray, but the clutch out from Steven manages to close oh, it all out. As we go back to League, we're going to get a little bit of a pepper from the chase there, but not going to find much. As now he's on the prowl invading St. Clair College's jungle, and the McFlurry Demon is out to play. <laughs> the, how menacing is that? Don't want any puffer or pepper in my McFlurry. No, thank you. Sephiroth, however, is going to be in for a world of her, and sure enough, from the uh, Saints' own jungle, McFlurry Demon. Snipe is on point, gets the elimination. That's exactly what Bethany needed to do. They made the play. This time it's stuck, and now they get to bring this one within 600. Okay, they can bring it all back here. Looks like Vice oh going to try and steal the red buff there as Bakery Boy starts an engage here. Going to try and punish that and get the, the buff back, but not going to be able to find it as Jace is a little bit faster there. But the Jax is a little bit faster there. As the Demon, the Jace is getting in the scuttle. Giving up that Vice there. It's a very, very good gameplay right now from uh, Bethany. They're down a little bit, but they're evening the scoreboard very, very quickly. I mean, good patience there from Bakery Boy. Most Malphites I know see two people close together like that, and you immediately fire the ultimate, right? But there were so many walls that could have been flashed over. That fight probably wasn't going to happen. Save that ultimate. Save it for the next team fight, because you never know what could happen. Of course, Dragon should be spawning in the next couple of minutes, and Rift Herald's always an opportunity as well. So had to blew that ultimate in the... In the um, in the jungle, and it could have been problematic when that objective comes through. But of course, once again, if you do want to stick with the League of Legends action, that's going to be on Saints Gaming CA3. And we see the Valorant action right here, Saints Gaming CA2, exclamation mark streams to get the links to everything. Wow. As we see Steven starting off the attack, but here comes TMU. Yeah, with a double kill in the retaliation there. TMU looking much more alive in this game, even though St. Clair still walking 100%. away with a 2-0 win so far. They can look to turn around here as they have the the life advantage right now. They have four players versus Saints, three players, and now they have sight control here on C. It's all up to the Saints. Now to try and defuse this spike as they are, mean, mean to rotate over. They're in the spawn right now. They're looking to rotate through the top and the side entrance here on C. As it looks like two, they send two to guard the side entrance. It's Giza here taking the gunfight in the 2v1 right now. And two 2v1s are currently happening with Seth looking to disrupt that. As now Giza in a gunfight here, he's very, very low. Huns looking to try and take this one out and go back to his team because he needs the time. As Fives gets one, he's going to find two and Steven going to find another. Oh. And Steven going to find the double kill, making it a three move. kill actually, and making it a 4k oh. and winning the round for the Saints 3-0. Oh my goodness, the flank was huge, able to throw off everybody there from TMU and just 
make it so that it was impossible to guard everything at once. But now, here comes the excitement as we have the Dragon Blade. We're going into Overwatch again. I could wall the pick here from map number two. It looks like the Saints are going to start things off on the attacking side and right on into the swing of things. Red X, of course, maybe a support does not matter. He's wow. be absolutely sending it with the rest of the squad. And it looks like Razor and the rest of the Saints are going to delete the side of Northeastern University, making that one look very, very simple on a spot that is usually impossible for the most part to try and actually breach. Point three is possible. Yeah, now they are. Go look at the third point here on Eichenwald. It's going to be a good match as you see Razor is just on point here, weaving in and out, getting the dash tree sets on this Genji, and now we're getting our first big team fight here on the stream as we see the Kirko all come out. Shashi going in there, and he finds one. Hedwig gonna find one, actually. Clean that kill up, try and push off the Saints from the payload, and it looks like it's being very successful. Looks like disrupted as the Saints gonna play it safe. Not gonna the kill, uh -oh. actually. Razor gonna take a fight there, get him very, very low, but there's a health pack right nearby, and it looks like Hedwig charging the overclock nearly having full ultimate charge. And Hedwig is just a mere DPS player. They're not very tanky. I'm surprised they got out of that one alive, but this could be problematic. Hedwig pops the ultimate, looking for as many shots as possible there with that railgun, doing big damage, but it's getting big pressure right on top. Razor not going to let Hedwig get any room. Takes him down nice and quick and it could be more to follow. An absolute cluster in this corridor of the castle, and it is in the Saints' favor as of right now. Red X takes one, Razor takes one, and who's on the point? Nobody has it right now, but it is just an absolute skirmish. Eventually, that Junker Queen is gonna go down. Frisco is going to fall, and with the tank down, it should be good distance now. Borderline third point here for the Saints. Yep, and with both DPS's ults in their back pocket along with the sound barrier, it's looking more than enough to deal with the final push here as we get past the final point. And it looks like there's not much contestion. One meter left. They have all the ults to use. We're going to see the, the rally come out, the overclock, and the blade. And there's a reverse sound barrier going to contest oh. it, but Crime still finds one through the chaos. Now they find the tank as well. Radix is going to get a double kill. Okay, He's a support, Radix. but he can attack. <laughs> He's getting a triple kill and soaks the other support, cleaning it up. Support, but they know how to kill. Oh my goodness. The support DPSs are coming in clutch. Who needs DPS when you've got supports? That's what the whole GOATS meta was. Don't remind me. But beautifully done there from the Saints. The back line ends up being the front load of damage, it looks like, alongside the rest of the Saints as well. So after a three-pointer like that, good momentum. We bring it back on over here to Valorant, where it looks like TMU looking to attack onto the safe site once again. Now, here we are, looking to attack Saints side. It's looking like an A push here. TMU needs to start winning rounds here as they are down four. Yes, yeah, so looking oddly be familiar. And the Saints looking to make as many great plays as they can Meg Instinct right behind there. There is the oh. triple trail from TMU Blue. Instinct gonna dash through though, dash through the chaos, put up the wall, and none of the Saints have fallen. They take a little bit of damage, take a little, couple bullets here, but they're looking none the wiser. Oh. Wow, amazing op shot for Hans. They're Stallion gonna pick one, the K gonna pick another there. They're just moving as a squad here with Stallion in there, planting the bomb with Seth in the back there, trying to find some opening here, but it is a 5v2. It's not looking good for them. And Seth trying to find a kill. He oh finds my. one. Oh he my. finds two. Will he find another? Can he find some? He's going to go in the back, but he gets taken out there. He finds one, and now it's a 2v1 for Seth. He's a little bit alone here. He has a Viper Pit. Seven bullets in the chamber. Going to fake the defuse, make them force the push. He's going to get flash out. Nice dodge, though. He's going to push. He finds oh! a Colette headshot. <laughs> Getting the 4K in the round and defusing the bomb. <laughs> Can you believe it? I can't. Seth clutching the round for the Saints, bringing them 5-0. I'm still speechless from that play from Seth, but we have a team fight happening on both Overwatch and League of Legends at the same time. Game day at its finest. Highlights everywhere. The Saints are getting jumped on. That's going to be Bethany actually winning that team fight overall, it looks like. Same for Northeastern. And also winning the fight in St. Kill. Oh They're getting a triple kill, so as one team is up, the other are, are experiencing their lows. Absolutely insanity across all of the games. But of course, we expect nothing less of the postseason or the close to the end season there.
for NECC and Nace, respectively. So we now see McFlurry Demon just poking away there at Bakery Boy, and we finally have a small chance to kind of breathe here as we take a look at how the game state is for a league. And to be fair, the Saints had a very, very strong start. Got about a quick 1,000 gold lead, but they've not really extended that lead. They got a Dragon, but that's basically it. They got a Dragon, they got a Rift, so they have a little bit of money, a little bit of an objective advantage, but got a little bit more kills, but close game nonetheless. They're looking oh boy. to take the second Dragon, but it's looking pretty risky here. And taking a look at Overwatch side of things, we're diving on through. The Saints were able to get that full completion, but they immediately answer with a team fight as soon as that first point is taken. Immediately shreds down Northeastern University. So sure, Northeastern had one good fight, but that is it there. The next Dragon now is available, but Rock Boom just got Shreked. And now what are you going to possibly do here going towards this Blue Drake? Don't have the DPS from the Zai here. It's going to be tough, but they're already up a Drake. They can give one up. The Ocean Drake, well, pretty useful. Not going to change the game. The extra movement speed from the Cloud, though, I think is what you really want here. <laughs> Nonetheless, early, yeah. giving a Dragon early could be proved disastrous. They're going to take the Scuttle or the, the Rift Herald there in retaliation, getting my crabs mixed up as McFlurry Demon just clearing the wave. His tower is very low, I must add. Yeah, not much defense left there, McFlurry Demon. Maybe you're going to look for a cheeky little shot, but probably going to opt against it. Channel O, never mind, proving me wrong. There very well could be a fight towards that Rift's arrow, but nope, never mind. Just going to fire a quick pot shot and move on through. As we move on through over to this Overwatch side of things where we have utility galore here for the Saints. We have ultimates everywhere. All it takes is crime to pop one ultimate, and it Shashi looks like the rest of the turn. Saints are going through. Josh is going to turn right around as he sees three of his teammates, four of his teammates now fall, and nope. he's just going to go back and away. He just turns right around. Nope, not going to deal with that. Going to wait, make one last push with my team. There's three minutes left on the clock, though, for them to do something here. Not all is lost, but they have Joker Queen all to contend with. And I think uh -oh. Squeak sees the opening. He might go for it, but he's waiting for them to move up. He sees the sound barrier get popped. And I think that's the key he's waiting for. He might use it after this. You can see a rally come out with Razor with the Dragon Blade oh. as well. The reflect headshot, and Razor going to get one as well. And Crime getting the last tank, and that's another team kill for St. Clark College. You love to see it. You can tell they're wired in. They are just focused. They're happy, though. You can see it. Little faint smiles pop on their face with each and every kill. Yep, game face is on there. And another scary scenario, both Genjis pop the Dragon Blades at the exact same time, but this time it was Razor that got the best of it and didn't even need it completely. Got the one elimination just with a reflect, which was absolutely disgusting. Now see Shashi here trying to do the one-on-one -on -one, and Razor is absolutely gonna take care of that one with the help of the rest of the Saints. Crime and the rest of the squad should be able to defend this slowly but surely. We're seeing that initial checkpoint there in this Northeastern University squad. Sure, they got the first checkpoint, but they've hardly moved past spawn at this point. They've hardly moved past it. Frisco gonna get a kill. Gashley, oh. a double kill will make that. And now they're looking to clean it up, try and push their team out. Oh. Squeak gonna jump off the edge there. Uh, maybe just go back with the team as they yeah. saw. Not wanting to get staggered there because you need that tank as they finally get a good push on the payload here, and now the Saints are going to make their final stand here on the bridge, trying to put the stop to Northeastern University's momentum here. There's enough group up. Sorry, yeah, there's enough time on the clock that they might be able to get a couple of pushes out of this one. But the flank from Squeak, this could get nasty. Yeah, here we are. We got a good knife going, and now the grenades also out denying good area there. And oh. we're going to find one with the overclock, and now there is. The anti wow. there from the Joker Queen. There's a double kill, a triple kill, and Razor gonna find one in the chaos, but that's not gonna amount to much as Crime slides away. Scoop cleaning up a Razor, and all that's left is Crime to go crawling back to his team as they have just been totally destroyed there by the double ultimate from Frisco and Hedwig as Crime tries to find an opening. They don't want to give them this last checkpoint. We switch to the Doom to try get some knockoffs here. 
push them off of the payload. Hedwig gonna get a double kill though, and Razor gonna get a kill in retaliation. It is chaos here. Squeak with a shred of health that supports keeping him alive, but not for long as Hedwig gets a kill as well. There is a Dragon Blade coming out from both Genjis once again, and Razor winning it out once again as well, and he gets a double kill, and that might be Ow. enough to stop their push as no one's left, <laughs> and they all get deleted out with Red X getting the final kill, and that is the payload being prevented. They only have 30 seconds left to reach this checkpoint. So that is it. They are out and down for the count with Saints taking two maps. You show me that team fight 10 times. I swear Northeastern wins that 9 out of 10. They immediately deleted both of the supports from the Saints, but somehow they still managed to pull that one out on top. And the cart is right outside the gates of the castle, but it does not matter. Razor and Crime, alongside the rest of the Saints, are shredding them in this corridor. Seconds are ticking on through. The backdoor attempt was there from Frisco, and to be fair, he's got a ton of HP to try and burn through, but the time has come. There is no more time on the clock. It will be reset one more time after a couple of four glory moments. And to be fair, they are falling left, right, and center. Saints are gonna take Eichenwald. And in an overwhelming fashion indeed, on attack, they get three points and preventing Northeastern from even getting two. They played very, very well. Both teams fighting amazingly, but Razor, time and time again, showing that it's a little bit of a Genji dip. The, the double blade, time and time again, he gets them over and over, gets Where's the double reflect? kill, right there. the reflect into the final kill. That was an amazing game to watch, but going back to amazing games, St. Clair and Valorant having an amazing game, but down there in in league, we're gonna oh, see a we massive go. team fight. Here it is, it's happening. The ult are coming out, Orianna gonna find one in the chaos, and now we're battling over the Drake, the Chemtech Drake. And we see the Hourglass come out for Bryce, but he gets taken up by Maddie now, it's one for one. And now, Baker Boy oh. is on a rampage, getting another, and the Saints are picking them all off one by one. There's the Jarvian ult, gonna keep him in the ring. Double kill coming out from Rock Boom, and now McFlurry Demon gonna have to scurry away in a little bit of a hurry. That is Chemtech Drake for St. Clair College. All right, so that's going to give them the Drake lead here, or lead here in this one. And that team fight, honestly, Bethany didn't necessarily look too bad there. They immediately blew up Zephyroth. However, the big combo I think they were looking for, where the Jax or the Jace jumps in and the Oriana ball was on it, it did only focus down Zephyroth in that scenario. So sure, that's a big target it took down, but everybody else was still extremely healthy. Rockboom was feeling rather comfortable for the most part in that fight with Alonzo by their side. And eventually, once Bakery Boy and Maddie could line up in that team fight. They'd pop the rolls, they dove on through, and nobody else could survive that one. That was either a three or a four for one, I believe, in that team fight there for the favor of St. Clair, plus the Drake on top of that. So now that gold lead was starting to creep even more towards maybe that 4K or so, Mark. St. Clair College running away with it right now with double the amount of kills that Beth and the Lutheran has right now. Now it looks like we're gonna get a play for the Baron already. Well, 22 minutes in. They're gonna fight for the Scuttle. St. Clair probably wants to drag this out a little bit longer as long as they can, but McFlurry Demon gonna try and get that Scuttle, deny any vision for St. Clair College, and back with his team. <coughs> now that they have the vision, they can relax. But when they're gone, Malphite there in the mid, gonna take or in the bot lane, gonna take out a turret with Tom Kench. They're trying to guard the mid tower. Rock boom but he's just moving through as a machine. Same with Bakery Boy, just annihilating at all the waves at once. St. Clair just running away with the lead right now. That's what's weird though. We look at this, like the KDAs across the board, other than the mid lane, and now that I look at it, the top lane, holy smokes, Bakery Boy. Never mind, I was gonna say that it was pretty close across the board, but we do see two lanes that are kind of starting to stand out a little bit. The Jace on the side of Bethany Lutheran, uh, McFlurry Demon does seem to be falling a little bit behind, but granted, those big shock blasts are still hurting a ton if it lands on the right targets, but that is gonna be a very, very beefy Bakery Boy for the the Senna to try and have to burn through and like Weiss on the Jax, that's gonna be a tough um, tank to have to burn through at, or for sure. And by the time you get there, like are you even hitting the right targets? We'll have to see as we do get ready to hop on through. We're gonna hop on through here back to 
Valorant in just a moment's time. But of course, for my just once again, exclamation mark streams to get the links to all of these matches, especially if you want to follow one in particular. Valorant on Saints Gaming CA2, League on CA3, and Overwatch on CA4. Just as another turret falls in League of Legends, a round falls in the favor of Toronto Metropolitan Blue Team. As it looks like they're going for a very aggressive oh. B push. Big snipe coming up from Kaya, but the K gonna trade it out there. Now it's a 4v4. Oh, this is always such an explosive map with Decay exploding with the op here, getting another kill on Giza. And Steven's watching the flank, doesn't land the headshot though, he's gonna have to back out, taking a little bit of damage, a little bit worse for wear after that fight. Now, oh. Seth's gonna not land the headshot either. A stallion on point with the aim as they rotate over to Seaside, gonna wall off the Neon, but I don't know if he knows he got through. He's gonna sneak on through, oh. he finds the headshot, gonna get flashed, blinded, and all the rest as Steven oh! cleans up with a clean 3K. <laughs> oh, the spray transfer complete, beautifully done. Did not let go of the trigger in the slightest, which is usually so risky, but they make it happen beautifully. And the Saints are running away here with game number two. TMU and a little bit of a very, very similar situation where going into halftime, they could be fighting for their life already. Yeah, they are having an even rougher time than the last game. I think they, w when they were at 10, TMU was blue, was at two. So they have all the odds stacked against them. Let's that see. Odin? Can, so yeah, that is an Odin coming up from Steven. He's going to reward himself with a double kill. He knows no he's got it. A 4K. Will he get the oh ace? My God. The Odin out of the gate. What are you on, Steven? What is happening here? The Odin, he just... Sprayed it down, a long, securing a free ace. Is he just holding that in the back pocket? Is this all just a game to him? What is happening? <laughs> what the heck was that? It actually, you get one kill in that situation, you're happy, let alone five. Absolutely ridiculous stuff coming out here from the Saints. How They had like three ops and an Odin. They are flexing hard right now. They have the money, they have the kills, they have the skills to back them up. It's, it's not looking aye, good aye, if you TMU. I, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of games are uh, mental here. It looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a knife, knife battle fight here. after the chaos that just ensued. You'll take whatever you can get. Steven, though, still on point, getting the first knife kill. It's gotta hurt. As now we're seeing the knife tactics come out. <laughs> gonna get another kill on Caillou. Decay getting a knife kill. Seth getting one back. Pretty even here, but it's down to two on TMU. You can tell the Saints are good with their knives, but Sean <laughs> not gonna be able to out knife Steven. Steven, give him a gun, give him a knife. He'll be the kill leader in whatever round he's in. Now the fight, the last stage, just over on C. Waiting to take the fight. Uh, poor Sage, I don't think got the memo here. I don't know what instigated this, but it seems like there was some sort of agreement to have a knife fight here in, in this one. And now the Saints know where the Sage is. I think they're just waiting at this point for the inevitable. Oh what gosh. is going to happen here? Oh my, oh, <laughs> take down. A little bit of a take down there. Waiting to see if he'll do anything in retaliation as we have another dragon happening in League of Legends. And it's not looking like it's gonna be contested very much. There the goes. rest of them are all up top river trying to contest the Baron. Actually, the Baron gets taken out. And now it looks like St. Clair is gonna run away with it with three dragons in the pocket and a Baron buff. They're gonna run it down oh, mid, gosh. take the tower down in about three seconds. And now, all they have to do is push this wave up, and this might be it. Unless Bethany Lutheran can find an amazing play here. It's looking all St. Clair College. I mean, there may not necessarily be a Dragon Soul, but the Saints basically have every other buff under the sun at this point here. So much stronger across the board here. Maddie, oh my god, that KDA just keeps getting bigger now, doesn't it? Looking fantastic here in this first game on the Jarvan. But still, very awkward spot here. 
for Bethany to try and close this one out. This tower is not going to be locked for this world. It's going to be deleted pretty well instantly. But how do you even attempt to engage on this? Jace's decision is just to not and just push that top side, it looks like. And as we look into Valorant, it's another knife match down to the Sage again. AFK once again. Zankler College with such an overwhelming victory. How could it go any other way? All the whole oh, no. team, it's a whole team play. Yes, yep. <laughs> Death but a thousand cuts here. <laughs> all at once. Just gonna chill out, have a party, let oh. it save. Use all everything you have on the board. But down on the there League of is. Legends side of things, sure, Valorant is gonna win. Absolutely no question about that one. But the Saints are knocking on the door of the Nexus and they actually haven't quite got it. It's gonna be McFlurry Demon leading the charge here for Bethany to turn this one on the Saints. Maddie getting his first death of this game, maybe an over um, an overextension on that last engage. Yeah, we're gonna see back come out from one of the Saints. They're gonna back up, but they did get one of the inhibitors and get, I, I think they got bottom tower as well. So they are in a very, very good spot. Right now, they got bottom inhib as well, almost getting the last tower guarding the Nexus. All they have to do is shove top. <coughs> that is going to be it. Bethany Esports. But Heck in the tower there. Overall on Overwatch, we have Flashpoint with St. Clair securing a two-point lead. They just need one more, but it looks like Northeastern fighting a good fight, capping one point of their own as they are at 90% already. St. Clair moving in very, very quickly. Yep, here they come. Here they come. They're pushing them off, looking to close it out right at the end, trying to flip the point. There's a being contested here. 99%. We've seen it before. Will we see it again? Looks like they all fall down as Northeastern University is decimated go. by Razor once again and the rest of St. Clair College securing a team kill. And now they just have to hold it long enough to secure one more point. And that is going to be it for, for, for the, our Overwatch games. They yeah. already have two points. Yeah, one more team fight left here essentially for the Overwatch squad. One more defense, and they are golden to take this first round of the playoffs. Northeastern fighting for their playoff life. They're sitting there at 99%, but can they win one more? Overtime is ticking on down. Crime dancing on through. Pick that Tracer, try and just juke everybody out. Here comes Razor with the Dragon Blade, looking for the finale. Not going to get it. Hedwig, the feisty little birdie, is going to take care of that one. Two kills in a row. Scoop going to find one as well. And the Saints, they might actually drop this one. We'll see in just a second. Sure enough, GG Hop, Sashi, and the rest of the squad here for Northeastern University are able to clean that one up and keep themselves in this game. That is the nature of Flashpoint. Flip, flop, whatever you want to call it. It's back and forth, but it keeps us on the edge of our seats as the Saints need to secure one more. And Northeastern looking to keep their light alive and secure two more and take their first game. Yeah, right on the doorstep. And of course, again, big congratulations there to the Valorant squad for their 2-0 victory there in the NECC Legends Division, making that one look rather easy in game number two anyway. Game number one, TMU, bigger fights, but did end up going down. But here we go. Next um, flashpoint is here, is available. And Frischko, he's been a player to watch for a long time here in this game. Maybe the tank, but making a ton of plays in their own right. Scoop as well, pretty clutch, and is able to assist Sashi on the Genji, diving on in there with them. And actually, Northeastern University, slowly but surely, were able to get that point and keep themselves in the game again. They're crawling their way back here as Frisco cleans up the final kill on Razor. That's a nice stack. You're sending him a little bit back from his team there. But again, he's pretty quick. He'll catch up pretty quick. But that's a nice 30% and climbing lead from Northeastern University with Scoop there. Doing a lot of heavy lifting. Like very, very well as we go oh. back to our <laughs> League of Legends game. And how could it go any other way? The Saints are at the Nexus. They are coming with a second Barra buff. And that is it. They clean it all up in the final match there, or the final little push there. The first game one victory versus Bethany Vikings Esports. Yeah, they, they got kind of uh, stifled there ever so slightly from that one team fight, but it did look like they were able to regroup 
ace them and then move on through. Pop goes an exit and off to game two. We go sh slowly but surely. But of course, we still have this Overwatch game. Looks like Northeastern's been able to hold for a long time. We're at 95% here. If the Saints won the challenge, just they need to get there now. It's Red X diving on through, popping or forcing some of the utility here from the side of Northeastern University. Squeak's already in position, no alt in hands. We're gonna just try and tank as much as possible with that shotgun in hand, doing tons of damage, but a big sound barrier coming out from Scoop to keep everybody alive. Razor has that ultimate popped as well. Dragon Blade charging on through, but really only able to get the one elimination with the help of Squeak, it looks like. Back and forth on the points we go. The Saints were able to actually scare Northeastern University off of the points we are actually gaining in terms of percents right now. Slowly but surely making the comeback, and this point is actually in our favor. Red X and Razor hunt them all down into a very awkward staggered position, making it so this next five on five is gonna take a little while, and it'll be at least 50% by the time they fight again. Ashashi getting a double kill, but Razor shutting him down once again. And this game is looking very, very good. Northeastern University contesting amazingly as we see Hedwig there playing very, very well. Getting the headshots. We're gonna get taken out by Crime with a railgun headshot to the head. And now chaos is ensuing. There is the Junker Queen alt sound barrier to reply. Squeak's going in, taking them all out. He sees he's low, goes for the axe, misses, but Crime gonna clean that up. Squeak gonna get a kill. And Razor gonna go in as well. Red X, everybody's getting kills on the team as it's 90% uh -oh. on the board, 99% for Northeastern. You wanna take it back, but with how the Saints are playing, it's looking hopeless as no one's there to contest. And St. Clair takes home the game versus Northeastern University, 3-0. Holy moly, I can't say that Northeastern didn't put up a good fight though. Very good back and forth. The scoreboard is not gonna do this one justice. And a lot of it had to do with this player right here, Frisco, on this Junker Queen. Let's see what they do in terms of this play of the game. Yoink takes them down nice and quick. And sure enough, wow, just everybody on point in that team fight to blow everybody up there on the side of the Saints. And wonderfully, done in that regard but that was a chaotic like half hour or so of games there and now we finally kind of get to slow it down a little bit which is a little bit nice so of course a quick recap um tmu versus our saints varsity squad and valorant and any any cc legends division we were able to take that one 2-0 in a rather convincing fashion then our next match that did just finish, of course, the Overwatch matchup, Northeastern versus the Saints, of course, in Overwatch. First game of NACE playoffs. We were able to take that one again, 3-0. Score doesn't do it justice. We still have League of Legends to go, but of course, in classic League of Legends fashion, we have to wait probably like 20 minutes for the draft. But we're not going to just throw it to a break, throw some music, and call it a day. We're going to sit here and talk to some people. We've got an interview and waiting. Coach Owen and I think a couple of the Valorant members want to come talk about that matchup. And we'll get to that one in just a couple moments time, it looks like. Sure, we're going to take a very, very quick break. It looks like to get that all set up, get the microphones all ready to go. And we'll be back within a couple minutes' time.
We're back from our very short break, and I'm here with our player, Steven, and the coach, Owen Hybrid. It is going to be – that was a crazy match, Thank I just got to say. Thank you. That was uh, well played all around from both teams. And uh, how would you feel about it? You know, just get your thoughts. Uh, I felt pretty good, you know. It was a pretty easy 2-0 for us. Not to, not to sugarcoat it, it was pretty easy for us. Uh, I came into the match pretty humble. I was kind of nervous at the start, like I am for most matches. And, uh, you know, just took it slow, round by round, closed it out. Yeah, you played you you played amazingly, dude. Yeah. I gotta I gotta say I gotta point out some of my favorite moments. Yeah. You got yeah, <laughs> you got the the spray transfer like a 4K, oh, and yeah. then the next round after that you got the Odin Ace. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's pretty transfer. He's very humble. <laughs> <laughs> it's just another day for you, right? All right, so on the Odin <laughs> round, I was like, I was like, let me just pull out the Odin. I'm going to hold this. I'm like, swing into me. And then I was like, rah. Swung into me, got five. It was pretty, exactly. It's, not, it's just Steve hashtag mode, Steven mode. So as the coach, is that like stuff you drill? You're like, oh, you got to oh, yeah, just just go with the Odin. Yeah, we definitely drill. Like, yo, guys, sit here with an Odin. That's definitely what they did. No, but, um. You know, we, we like to have fun sometimes. Uh, you know, obviously we try to stick to the game plan as much as possible. Um, but, you know, stuff happens. When the match stuff is going like that, you know, stuff happens. Odin aces happen. <laughs> Steve <laughs> modes happen. Definitely. And overall, how do you feel like your season's going so far? Great. Yeah, I think the season's going great so far. Um, you know, we've been proven to, I guess, not, a, not even just the rest of Canada, but the rest of, like, the U.S., like, North America that we've been – um, like a top team to compete with, um, and uh, you know we're ready. We're ready to take everything. Uh, we just got the first seed in Nace playoffs, so that's huge. It's the first time in Valorant history that we've ever gotten first seed. Um, you know, it's been it's been pretty good so far. So we're excited. Yeah, definitely. After watching the guy that match, you can tell you guys deserve it, and your guys don't have that just aim skill. You guys got knife skills as well, as we saw <laughs> at you. the end of that. What was that all about? You guys tell us about that. Uh, so basically, Kyle just Kyle just asked in the chat. He's like. You guys want a knife at B? And then they're like, yeah, I'm down. So then we just walked at B. Yeah. I didn't approve of this. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't approve, approve of this. Either. I just let it happen. I, I can't say nothing in games. Exactly. So you can't do anything. I couldn't stop it. You can only control your players so much. But, yeah. you know, if everyone agrees to it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You got to play Jet, you know, bring the knife to the fight. Yeah, yeah cheat. for sure. Just 100%. cheat. Technically. But overall, you guys played amazingly. Do you guys have any closing thoughts before it closes out? St. Clair's going to win Nace Varsity Premier and Sevo and Red Bull Campus Clutch. Everything. And everything. We're here to win. We're, We're taking here to over, compete. not just Canada. We're taking over. North America and the world. <laughs> you heard <laughs> it here first, <laughs> first folks. They're going to take Steve over Bob. the world. They're going to take it all the way here. And we're going to throw it to a quick break. And we're going to <laughs> see you after with the draft for LOL.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back for our picks and bans for Game 2 of St. Clair College versus the Bethany Vikings Esports, also known as Bethany Lutheran. And the, with the last match going the way it did, we're seeing a big picks come out already from both teams. St. Clair picking the Cassanti and Bethany picking the Jacks. Is it bad that I want to say it's already Jover because we got Cassante? <laughs> I just know this character is absolutely nuts, but we'll have to see if Bethany can play around it. They are really committed to running this Jax, and it looks like they're going to pick up the Oriana as well. Did not necessarily have the best time in game number one. However, it's still a relatively safe pick, so I guess you can make a play style adjustment assuming you're going up against a Syndra or something yet again, because no mid-bans have really been taken off the board, unless you include the Briar, which is an interesting ban, and sure enough, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're going to have Zephyrat back on the Syndra. Definitely, and as for the Jax pick, I'll just go back to that. Jax mm -hmm. is a very, very strong champ right now after the rework, so I understand why they want to play it, but it didn't work out, so I think they'd uh -oh. want to change the team combo. We have the Poppy going in the jungle. Oh, you wanted to dive on us, Jax? Nope. <laughs> nope. Not happening. <laughs> That's going to be rough. Going to get sent down, launched across the map, but they're going to launch probably a misfortune pick here. That would be odd. A little bit odd. We usually don't see that played at this level, but it could be good nonetheless. And definitely a wombo combo kind of style, and they are in fact going to lock it in. So they do have shockwave bullet time as a possibility there, which sure is going to take some serious coordination to try and pull off properly, but the potential is there. But it is going to be extremely hard to deal with. One, just dealing with Cassanti. He's going to be right up in your face anyway. You want to pop your ultimate, doesn't matter. He's going to dive on you anyway, and maybe take a quarter health if you're lucky. And then you have Poppy, who's just going to disrupt all of your mobility. But looking at some of the bands, we're going to get rid of Rock Boom's Tristana, it looks like. And Saints opt in for the next ban in just a moment's time. A little bit of love, like in terms of bands across the board here. Take away the Gwen, take away the Seraphine, take away the Rel. Where's this one going? Yeah, that could be interesting. And you know they don't want to go up against <laughs> Rock Boom's Tristana. Huh? And there's the <laughs> Sorica ban. Maybe uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they know something I don't, or it is just... Well, I mean, I guess Soraka Misfortune can be quite the bully lane, and it does actually look like Bethany's really focusing in hard now on that bot lane to make Rock Boom's life extremely difficult, which is, to be fair, the rest of the lanes are essentially taken care of. It is just the bot lane left to go here, unless we have an unconventional bot lane support pairing, which I'd be very surprised was actually the case. Let's see where this last ban goes here for the side of the Saints. Oh. They're getting rid of the Renata Glass, which has me feeling that this is going to be a, like, not an Ezreal or any one of these, like, ability-based mm -hmm. AD carries, but more of, like, a traditional auto-attacker. Auto Definitely. We have the Trundle pick also probably looking to be... Not fair. You think that's the top of the jungle? Because we have the Jax jungling in the last game. Right. And, I mean, there's lots of beefy um, members on the side of the Saints so far between the Poppy and the Cassanti that the Trundle would absolutely love to pop an ultimate on and just get extreme beefy. And this is kind of what I was thinking about. So you're going to be going for the Jinx. You have a lot of protection against Dive. And there's, like, a lot of setup that has to be played here from Bethany. So as long as your positioning is half decent, you can avoid the Wombo Combo. And at that point pick a hyper carry and jinx going to be a solid pick in this regard and then alonzo has essentially the pick of the litter here in terms of which support they would like and the alistar is going to be the pick so a little bit of extra protection and gauge and peel to say the least and that's unconventional Ooh. to say the least hello season three <laughs> <laughs> yeah the zyra pick that can be very aggressive if they're hard to play against occasionally, but against Jinx, a very speedy auto attacker. I don't know if that's the best pick here. I mean, it's going to be odd because, in theory, the Zyra Misfortune can actually bully this lane extremely hard. But if, God forbid, they get jumped on, they're toast. But it's not like the Jinx is going to surprise you. If anything, it's going to be the Alistair. So there's going to be a lot of pressure onto Alonzo to be making these engagements, assuming when the jungler comes on through. I doubt that we're going to see any sort of two-on-two -two attempted engages 
from the side of the Saints, to say the least. And they're just <laughs> chilling at this point. Look at this. Lean Everybody back. leaning leaning back at this point here, waiting for everything to go on through. But uh, they're ready. I don't know. They're, they they're are ready. Charged. They're, they're ready or relaxed. They they're, are zen. Zen. They're in they're in the flow state right now. They they won and they're ready to win again. They are resting up for what could be a very, very good match with it seemed like a couple decisive fights from the side of Bethany could have turned things one way or the other. But the Saints winning overwhelmingly, they look like they're pretty confident. Yeah, man, those uh, those secret labs are rather comfortable to say that at least there's so a fair enough for relaxing on those ones but of course now we've got to wait out this big old spectator delay we see the draft we have a little bit of our predictions the last thing i want to i guess i want to kind of touch on looking at the two compositions here what do you think is going to be the outcome of this game i think the saints are going to win once again because Lots of unconventional picks from the side of Bethany, uh, East, Viking Esports there. But overall, I think the Saints just going with what works, what's tried and true and tested for them. They're going to win once again in probably a very strong fashion. Yeah, I'm going to be there to agree with you. A lot of these picks do seem to flow with each other and then kind of counter what Bethany Lutheran College is trying to do. So there's going to need to be a lot of outplaying. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Bethany to land these Wombo Combo styles, Shockwave with the Bullet Time or something along those lines, to really swing a team fight hard and early. Otherwise, they are just going to get run over, it looks like. But with that being said, we're going to be waiting out the delay. Quick little water break before we hop onto the rift for game number two of this NACE playoff matchup.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to Game 2 of Bethany Vikings Esports versus St. Clair College. The last map was very much so in St. Clair College's favor. The St. Clair Saints running away with it at nearly 25 minutes or so. And our lineups for today, the Bethany Vikings looking like Jax on top, being the McFlurry Demon, and Vice there on the Trundle, our jungler, with Uni there in mid. Dog 2 on the bot lane in ADC, with also B Showmaker on the Zyra. And of course, we have Bakery Boy, Top on Cassanti, Energy Matty on the Poppy in the jungle there. And Zephyrot mid, Rock Boom on the bottom there, ADCing. And Alonzo, the coach and the support player for today on Alistar. And it's going to be an interesting one, of course, going into game two. Like you had mentioned during the draft, just Jax being so highly favored here, especially for this uh, um, Bethany Lutheran College squad. They had it in jungle last time by. Going to opt for top lane up against Bakery Boys Cassante. So we'll see how that turns out. Both those characters as the game go along will be absolutely okay. I don't feel like anybody really truly outscales each other. As this game goes through, just Cassanti will be tanky. Jax will do a little bit more damage. But I'll definitely also be interested in seeing how this bot lane goes. And we can kind of see that um, Bethany is doing exactly what they need to do. Just poking out the same spot lane extremely quickly. Yeah, they are bullying the bot lane. Making full advantage of Sire being so powerful, so low level there. And the Misfortune as well. Just cruising on through. Running that good burst damage. And we have a little bit of a brawl happening top. Uh, Jax getting a good stun there on Bakery Boy. Has to back off play a little bit more safe, but he's going to try and take the ball, but he's not there yet. He doesn't have his ult, doesn't have enough tools to play with to really get much of an advantage in a one on one fight there. Yeah, just trading off back and forth. And so far, really. Oh, we got a little bit of a nade actually happening there. It's going to be Gwise down in the right side of the Saints jungle. But as soon as the cooldowns go, Maddie is going to run for the hills. Dog2 actually came up here with Showmaker as well. The Saints not going to opt to collapse in on this red buff. They may try to get some cheap damage here. Alonzo is right there. But again, just the range difference makes it so Let's difficult. Fight, though. And oh gosh, Maddie, there is a little bit of engagement. Can uh, Gweiss get out of there alive? Or is Zephyrod going to be the possible victim here? The Scout of the Week does not quite hit its target. Some flashes are going to be burns, but nobody goes down. Alonzo, Alonzo looks for the headbutt pulverized, but actually gets himself in a really rough situation. Forced to flash away. Can he get out in time? I don't think so, unless he's got the Jukes of Hazard going on here. Staying alive, has vision on everybody. Can he escape? He's just stuck. Can he channel out? Oh, we might. He does. Oh my oh, he's goodness. He's going to go for the fight. Oh, he's going to go for a little bit more of a safer back, I think, in the push. We got a first blood happening on the top from the Jacks there. McFlurry Demon getting the Cassanti with only surviving with a shred of health there. Must have been a much bloody oh brawl my. there. Yeah. Yeah, and Maddie was up there too, but even Maddie's not in a very good situation as well. Maybe a couple turret shots did not go into his favor. So McFlurry Demon is able to get out of this one essentially scot free as long as Bakery Boy doesn't send it. That's a lot of damage to try and do to a Jax though. So not going to happen. Just push this wave into the turret and call it a day there. But all right, so top lane advantage so far going over to Bethany and to McFlurry Demon. The top lane is looking pretty good for McFlurry Demon right now. But here in the bot lane, it's pretty even, even though the lane has been getting bullied time and time again. Rockroom still hanging on, not dying just yet, holding on and trying to push this wave up. And it looks like they finally got the wave advantage for once with Alonzo here pushing up as well. They're looking to try and get a good fight here. They need to find a kill and quick to get in any of Oh, gets a knock up and Maddie's there as well. Going to dive in, but... Showmaker flashes out. That's probably going to be the end of the story as they just push up the wave with Kvice <laughs> there pushing up, but not going to turn around. He's just going to turn around and back off. And that's definitely disappointing. I think there was Hex Flash, so it's not a major cooldown, like really taken down this time by. But they went for the play, and if anything, that is how you are going to. Um, beat that bot lane, you have to specifically all in onto them, especially if you all in onto the Zyra. I mean, you're going to um, 
burst her pretty quickly. Very, very squishy mage. But flashing away, of course, the poppy denial of uh, dashes does not necessarily associate the flash. You can go over in that regard. So not going to work this time, but with no flash, um, if they make a return trip, they could very well get that bot lane. Definitely, as we see a fight breaking out on the top line between McFlurry Demon and Bakery Boy once again, but McFlurry Demon just pushing up the waves, keeping the pressure on, and I must say, Bethany Esports doing much, much better this time than the last, where I would say they're even in the lead right now. With a little bit more turret damage, a lot more gold, and still keeping up the pressure, just always. Yeah, basically across the board in terms of the laning phase, the Saints are behind, and they're going to try and make a dive here onto McFlurry Demon, but of course, with that built-in dash able to get out at the initial time, no flash in the pocket either. Zephyrot goes through, but takes a massive amount of damage for his trouble. A little bit of engagement now down into the river. Backup is here. Here comes Yuna, does have the shockwave available, looking for a good shockwave. Not going to end up happening, though. Bakery Boy going to get out of dodge. Saints are going to live this time by, but that could have been troublesome. Really, with so, with that looked like it was a pretty advantageous fight for the Saints, but mm. once again, Bethany quickly switched up, rotated around, and made that an advantageous fight for themselves. They know how to play the Saints very, very well. It seems like they've upgraded a lot since the last match. So just totally disrupting the Saints gameplay style. Yeah, across the board, just Saints are getting messed with. Every single lane is either losing in terms of CS experience or both. Even on the jungling side, this is the second or third time we've seen Maddie get invaded, and there's nothing he can really do. He's still by his Gromp right after the, uh, the Toronto there, after Gweiss was just threatening it. He didn't even attempt to steal it, but just knowing that he can get jumped on by that Trundle and could not take that 1v1 it was enough to kind of scare him away for a little bit and stall out his jungle route. So just across the board, Saints down on levels, Saints down on gold, and, and then in turn, um, down on firepower. I feel like they're probably going to have to try and play for the obje objectives even more now as they need any advantage they can get in the <coughs> game because just playing it straight right now, it's looking like Bethany Lutheran is running away with it. And their jungler... Jungler being low, getting stolen from, that's going to hurt more and more. You don't get those ganks, you don't get those objectives. It might all snowball out from there. But right now, the Saints just playing it safe, playing it by the book, and waiting for the objectives to come out, because I think that's when they'll jump out and start making those more dangerous plays. And McFlurry Demon just getting these stuns and just outplaying Bakery Boy top right now. Yes, yeah, CSY is not even close. He got the kill in the pocket as well. And you can see these trades are ever so slightly in the favor, especially if you dodge the skill, the skill shots. McFlurry Demon able to stay ahead. But um, with the way this game is going right now, it is on Bethany to kind of be in the driver's seat and make sure that since they have the lead, get more of a lead. Because if their strength right now is going to be going towards these objectives, forcing them and taking it themselves, if they play passively, they are not going to be going to, I feel like, their composition strength here. As we now see another top lane skirmish, but Gweiss is right there. Has what the Rift! The Rift Herald as well. It could be troublesome here. They do dive onto Bakery Boy, but it's just a matter of time before this Rift Herald hits the tower. Big gold going over to McFlurry Demon. And honestly, mission accomplished. Yeah, that was an amazing play from Bethany. They get out in record time, unscathed, <laughs> and... That's a lot of tower damage this early in the game, and that's additionally a lot of gold going to the side of Bethany Lutheran. They are oh. pressing every advantage they have, but it looks like Unity a little bit pushed up right now as Maddie goes in for the dive with Zephyrot, and they stun nice. him up and take him home, and that is making the kill line 1-1 for now. Maybe this is where things start to turn around for St. Clair College. There we go, Zephyrot on the board there with a kill assist in the pocket of Maddie as well. So some of this... Um, CS difference will be offset by that, and they definitely needed that. I feel like the longer this game goes on, the more ridiculous the St. Clair team composition will get. So once again, it's all on Bethany. While they have their lead, while they have their advantage now, they need to be pushing it. They got the Rift Herald, got some good uh, turret gold up on the top lane, and now immediately going for the Dragon pretty well as soon as it spawns and Gweiss was there to make it happen. So good on them. They're doing exactly what they need to do. They have to kind of win this one, 
I, I say under 30 minutes. If they can win this one or get this under 30 minutes, they're fine. But any further than that, we're going to start getting to the point where Zephyrot, Bakery Boy, Rock Boom, and everybody on the side of the Saints either deal too much damage or are just way too damn tanky to even deal with, even if you land your Wombo Combo. Definitely, and they already got the Hextech Drake with the first Drake. That's a yeah. very strong one to get. They're going to be down quite a bit now. And if they keep dragging this out, Bethany's going to just keep pressing the advantage more and more with every objective they've been getting. And they already, at 11 minutes, nearly have top tower done with before mm. the turret blending has even fell. Yeah, I, I imagine if we saw the gold lead right now, it would be in the favor of the Jax by a rather significant margin there. The Flurry Demon and Gwyce just doing a very good job of kind of jump starting the Flurry Demon slaining phase here. And get, that's the, I guess that's the one saving grace here. With um, Orianna plus... Uh, plus Jax, that still does carry some solid and or extreme even damage going into the late game, especially if you start off strong. So it's, I say under 30 minutes, but if it does go over, it's not a 100% end all be all, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Not just trying to retract my statement because I think I'm wrong, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's still possible but going to be much more difficult, to say least. I think we are in for potentially a long one here, as it seems pretty even, mm -hmm. as things are starting to swing back a little bit. St. Clair's favor up there in the top lane, at least, and it's pretty even down here in the bot lane as the waves come back. But overall, the Jinx in the house are just having trouble mm -hmm. getting in there and finding a fight to take. She seems to be peppered by the Zyra over and over, just taking a little bit of chip damage every time they take a step outside of their turret. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least this point oh. here for Alonzo, those plants aren't doing much damage. But what will be devastating is this possible team fight up here in the top lane. Maddie and Bakery Boy up against Kawais and McFlurry Demon. And right now, McFlurry Demon is not <laughs> going to be scared. In fact, it's going to basically just take the eject button out there from the ultimate by Maddie. Dives on in here. Who in the world? That's going to be Gweiss. Diving in onto Zephyrot. You're not long for this world. Taken down extremely quickly. Maddie's out of position now, too. That may be a tank. That may be Poppy. But it might as well have squished just like a Jinx immediately down here. Bakery Boy extremely low. Chomp and gone. And a Trundle getting those many eliminations is going to be devastating. This might not be over. Ultimate's blown down in the bot lane. Getting the Saints bot lane to at least half health or lower. And this is just not going in the Saints' favor whatsoever. Yeah, they're, they're just completely, seems like a total reversal of the last game. Bethany Lutheran just showing complete dominance across the board in every single lane. You could argue maybe mid lane showing the least amount of dominance, but still an advantage. Nonetheless, as the first tower falls in the favor of Bethany Lutheran, now you can see up at the top they have one in every single objective you could possibly have. They're just running away with it. Jack's already level 10. It's, it's it's not looking great with such a huge gold lead as well. 4K this early into the game is going to matter more and more. I mean, Bethany's just playing this exactly like they need to. They're not overextending, but they are they got ahead. Now they're getting more ahead just by making safe, solid plays. No major overextension on dives. If anything, they're the one to punish the Saints overextension. And now just getting the buffs, getting the dragons, getting heralds when they're on the way. Just looking extremely good. One more minute now before the next Drake does come online. And you can actually see the Saints are moving around the river to try and get as much uh, vision as possible. They know they're gonna have to challenge this, but I don't even think they necessarily have the firepower to do it on even grounds. So they have to look for a pick as we see Weiss taking a way down towards the dragon. Yep, there he is, popping his, ult, uh, popping his ability there, taking a little bit of health off of Matty, just intimidating him, pushing him off from any plans he has. So he cleans up the Gromp there. And overall, it looks like bot lane's trying to take that last tower, or at least push the wave up and make Bethany have to take it as they want to get this next dragon as they're already down one. And if Bethany gets the next one, well, then they're going to look to run away in every single sense of the word. Yeah, absolutely. Just 
like we say, everything seeming like in the favor of Bethany. Ten seconds now here on this dragon. Not going to immediately get there, but we do see some teleports coming on through. Rift Herald actually is just going to be soloed out here by McFlurry Demon. The Saints are going to know about it, but it's too little, too late. Going to be in the pocket of the Trundle. And they must know that this Rift Herald is going to come down at some point here. They're going to immediately dive on the Zephyron, immediately get smoked down. You are gone. You ain't going to do a fantastic job of securing the kill on that one. That's going to be the Super Mega Death Rocket coming on through from Rock Boom. Hits its target, but there's nobody anywhere near execute damage. So just a little bit of extra splash damage. And in theory, this would be optimal time for Bethany Lutheran to make a play onto that second dragon with so many, or one, one player down. The big ultimate from that Death Rocket being gone there from the Jinx. So no executes, which means this Dragon should essentially be given over for three, continuing the snowball. As Bethany Lutheran knows when they have the advantage and they know how to press it as they've gotten every single jungle advantage that you can get. Both Rifts, both Dragons. It's not looking good for St. Clair College. They need help from somebody, but they don't have anyone to ask for help as Looks like Maddie's just trying to make up for those early deaths and early, you know, invades that took away his XP. It's, it's not looking great for them. And essentially being down a player, there's not much they can do. It seems like on all fronts, it's it's been tough for any of the Saints to get in there and do anything. I mean, we've seen a few times too, Poppy, therefore Maddie is supposed to be the tank, but because they are so far behind, they just essentially get squished super quickly in some of these team fights. And if you don't have that frontline power, that just that threat, then you're just going to get run through. And I would even argue that the this uh, this soul, it's the 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 mana drink soul, right? So we have all these bushes everywhere. If there's anything I feel like extra hiding spots promote is wombo combos. It's a very very small minuscule thing, but I think even that goes into the favor of Bethany. McFlurry team and takes a brawl up here topside. We see here the Rift Herald get popped a mid and they take a tower along with it. So McFlurry Demon is just running down top. Oh, here we go. The fights in there. There's the big fight happening there in the bush, but not going to amount to much. Oh my. Bakery Boy gets killed under, nearly killed under tower. He escapes with a shred of health. Those jacks, that Jax is so overwhelming to deal with. He has a stun. Oh. The anti, and there he is, just jumping. He also has the mobility to go in for those execute kills. And Zephyrot looking to clean it up there, getting a blue ward, getting the vision he needs. As in the bot lane, they also take another turret in the favor of Bathing Luther, and that's one from every single lane. Zephyrot <laughs> just seconds too late, not taking. Are preventing the back and taking the kill against that Jax, who much he needs to be stopped. He has a 200 gold bounty. Same with the Trundle and the Oriana. They're all just playing amazingly, and now they have those bounties on their hands. So Saint Clair can bunker down, get those kills. They might be able to get a little bit of a much needed advantage. Yeah, get some kills or just wait, because right now just clear some waves, get yourself back into this. But this is going to make it extremely awkward because, in all reality, Bethany Lutheran just have to wait for the Baron or for the next dragon to come up. And it's like, okay, we're going to get this really valuable objective. What are you going to do about it? And this is might be the answer here. The Saints have to dive on in. Showmaker extremely damaged here. Half health immediately gone. Gweiss caught out by themselves. Going to take about half of their HP. So at least right now, the Saints did not necessarily get the kill, but they're going to be forcing... Bethany to at least wait on some of these objectives because it's where these objective fights happen. Wow. Things McFlurry are going to be problematic. Demon. Unless you just get one on one. <laughs> yeah, sorry to interrupt you no, there, but Flurry Demon just being oh, an God. absolute demon. Wow, a big fight happening in the mid, though. <laughs> there it is. B Showmaker, a shred of help, but staying on with a wow. big shield coming out from Trundle there, and he's going to go in there, but he's going to get shredded down. Oh, he's going to get a kill and getting dog two there, and they have to back off. Okay, so these fights here, if the Saints could manage to get the angle and pick these targets properly and just get rid of the squishies, they can fight their way back in these team fights. Granted, that was a four on five, and they basically immediately popped Showmaker, but granted, Showmaker did not die, so good on them to stay alive. But you can see they essentially popped Dog 2, good combo there from Zephyrot, and then Showmaker was basically out of the fights. 
but even then it still wasn't that convincing. Jax here, McFlurry Demon is just having his way with Bakery Boy down in this bot lane. That turret could be the next casualty if the Saints are not careful. Gonna bring a little bit of eyes down to that bot lane, and while they're doing that, Baron and Dragon are soon going to be available. Yeah, I feel like this next this next dragon will probably go the way of Bethany Lutheran, but St. Clair needs to try and prevent it as that's putting them on soul point on the next dragon and the next uh, the Baron as well could be something that changes the entire way this game is going as St. Clair they can win those cube fights pretty pretty well if they play their cards right they know they can outplay them oh it seems like a big dash in from Maddie and there just like is. that they have that amazing coordination and just like that the gold is not too bad and I think we got a game on our hands here from the Saints. They're looking to make this one interesting. God, this is a tough way to have to play, though. Relying on outplays and picks like this, you might be able to get it a few times, but eventually the opponent will smarten up to it. And especially with a need to carry as vulnerable as Misfortune, they're going to figure it out. Lonzo diving on through, looking for an engage, but it's such an awkward position, they really can't do anything. They have to watch out for Yune's uh, shockwave. It was in position to kind of separate the tank line and the DPS line. Sephiroth looking for a pick, but at the same time, like Dragon could be a threat as well. Diving on to Yune, good shield, so coming across the board. This Dragon is getting dealt with by the side of Bethany, going all over the place to kind of see exactly where everybody is. It's kind of trying their best to get to this mid lane, but Yune, even though got the stun from Zephyrite staying alive, and after such an awkward and messy scrap, this will be Dragon number three to Bethany. Yeah, that is a... <laughs> St. Clair, like you said before, can take those team fights time and time again, but, you know, Bethany Lutheran just winning so hard on objective and still putting up good uh, resistance there in the team fights. And there is a little bit of a technical pause, I believe, coming out in the league match. And it's very, very well played from everybody all around. As you can tell, it's about going to be about a minute until we're back in the game. So to break things down, Bethany Lutheran in the second game has seemed to found what makes the Saints tick. They found how to disrupt their entire game plan. And they just have gotten a little advantage, a little advantage time and time again and stacked those and have been snowballing it all the way to where we are now where they're one point away from Seoul. They have three towers over the Saints. They've gotten every rift and now it looks like they're eyeing Baron. Absolutely. Just like, like I said, the Bethany squad have just been able to make these methodical, slow, but not heavy overextension plays to get themselves a lead to the point now where they can just safely like contest these objectives over and over again. And it's like, okay, we're so far ahead. Do you want a 5v5? Do you want to try us? And Saints are like, just, no, we, we, we don't. We're that behind. And it's just making them fall that much more behind here. Because now, with three dragons on the plate here for Bethany, now the dragon soul becomes an issue. Now Baron is going to become an issue as well now that it has spawned here. And let's be honest, McFlurry Demon just on an absolute rampage in the top lane there with Dr the Jacks, with a lot of help there from Gweiss. Who can 1v1 the Jacks and deal with them right now? I'd argue nobody <laughs> on the side of the Saints. So he has whatever lane he has, he needs either two people, if not more, otherwise, you're probably risking your inhibitor. Now, all the eyes are on the Cassante right now as, you know, we know the win rate, we know the champ should be pretty strong, but <laughs> don't sleep on Jax. The Jax top pick, I've been playing it myself. It feels unfair sometimes. <laughs> Once you get the advantage, you can just keep on pressing it. You have a stun, you have defensive capabilities, you have the offensive capabilities, and you have a lot of CC potential as well. It's a great, uh, champ to have on your team and like you said before the Saints have so much to contend with with Soul Point being on the, bo uh, on the bottom jungle there and the Baron resting on the top they have to pick their battles and pick them well it's just like so weird too because like this is example A right now for exactly why you don't go <laughs> um, the, the game's over in draft Yep. Because sure, in all reality, the Saints have every tool on their champions to basically counter the majority of what Bethany uh, Lutheran College wanted to do. But 
They've been playing it extremely well. They've been finding their picks. They've been winning their individual battles, and they've gotten themselves enough of a lead early to the point where even though they may have the tools, the tools are too weak to actually get the job done. So if the Saints are going to win this one, they have to take this late. But even then, like that still doesn't give them the surefire answer here because of this little bugger down in the bot lane. The Flurry Demon just pitching a tent and making his home down in that bot lane, forcing Bakery Boy to stay there. Granted, they both have teleports, so if a team fight does break out, they can get there in time. But the tankiness of the Cassante compared to the overwhelming damage from McFlurry Demon's Jax right now is a big factor. And not only does he have uh, the, the damage to back it up, Jack's ultimate has such those stuns like that, but he's gonna get stunned right back out. We're having a little bit of a brawl down here with the bruisers, but not much is gonna amount to it. Baker Roy has to activate his passive there, his uh, little knock up, and it's good occasionally, but it's not good for every single engagement. His McFlurry Demon has the poke and has a long range to just wait it out and then jump in when it's his time. He can play on his terms, and Bakery Boy just has to walk in and take the fight whenever McFlurry Demon deems it so. Man, doesn't even need a stun to really put any pressure on the Bakery Boy. And now Gweiss is here once again, looking for the finisher onto Bakery Boy. Bakery Boy not going to let that happen, but going to opt to stay by the turret for now. And one thing that kind of slipped my mind there too, we did see it just a couple of seconds ago, but I did not realize the counter strike from Jax completely one shots a minion line. So just your pure pushing potential as well is not necessarily a stat that's really kept track of, but it's a massive threat nonetheless here. And oh, Bakery Boy, you're gonna be in trouble, my friend. Here comes to the pillar is absolutely on point. We're gonna feed this one on over to the Jax in just a moment's oh, time, oh, oh. unless, okay. They're actually going to turn this one into a team fight, it looks like. Diving on down into the bot lane. Weiss has been caught out. Flash is burned. Brockboom has the flank. The chompers are down. And Weiss is going to get shut down onto the Jinx. Exactly where it needs to be. And Alonzo oh. from the back line. Get excited and charge on in, Rockboom. Can he get some more on top of that? Absolutely are. That's going to be a kill on over to Zephyroth this time. <laughs> Uni is right there as well. Rock Boom not going to go towards oh. that turret, but two shutdowns going to the carries. That's exactly what the Saints needed. And now it looks like the Saints have evened up the, nearly evened up the kill line now and looking to take another turret, pressing the advantage. And maybe with all these players down, they can finally take an objective, whether that be Baron or prevent another dragon from being taken as we see the pings come out. It looks like they're going to try and move toward the dragon, prevent it, or something of that nature, as Soul Point can definitely turn the tide of this game to make it somewhat winnable into nearly unwinnable. Oh, they need the hustle, though. I'm looking at that Dragon Timer. 20 seconds down, Bakery Boy going to get hit by the Pillar, but is going to be able to escape. Looking at ultimates, I'm curious as to what was used in that bot lane fight, who will have what. It's going to be close there for the side of the Saints with basically all but Zephyrod's ultimate off the table. Meanwhile, a little bit more on the table here from the side of Bethany Lutheran. In fact, it looks like everything is here. So this team fight, if it breaks down immediately, this is going for Bethany. I think they need to start this dragon. They need to force the Saints in. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Bakery Boy going to lead the charge. Alonzo's right there as well. This dragon adds half. This is for the soul point as well. This could be troublesome. Yeah, the, the dragon's dropping down to low HP. We might see a steal come out from Maddie, but he has to take a fight. And red team, t Bethany Lutheran takes the dragon there. We see the ult come out from MF, gonna push them all off. And now we see a little bit of a drag coming out there. And now a big brawl is happening there. And it looks like Maddie has slain uh -oh. the McFlurry Demon. And now Dog2 is slain Bakery Boy. The top laners are all down. Now it's just oh, everybody else. Big stun coming out, and Maddie escaping with a shred of health. McGuire's gonna shut that down. And oh. Uni, they're gonna get a kill as well. And Dog Two gonna take out Zephyrot. And back and forth, it looks like it's a tit for tat situation as we get kill after kill, trade after trade. And now uh -oh. Bethany Lutheran coming out on top with Soul Point. And now they're looking to end it all by taking the Baron Nasher. Okay, this Bethany Lutheran squad wasn't tanky enough already. Give them the blue soul on top of that. They have regen for days. And now they're gonna get this Baron on top of that as well. That's absolutely heartbreaker here 
for the Saints. That fight was so close to winnable. Sephiroth was off to the side, just peppering damage. Nearly had Uni out of the fight, but could not quite finish them. And Dog, after initially getting stunned out after using the bullet time, was able to stay rather safe. Showmaker did a really good job of firing off root after root and just disrupting the entire mobility of the Saints to the point where none of the carries could actually die. Sure, McFlurry Demon went down, but everybody else was alive and well. And the fact there's so many members alive. Get that soul, get that Baron. And now we can expect some split push action more than likely here in a second with four in the middle. And then McFlurry Demon gets to do whatever he damn well pleases. Uh, the Saints need to somehow survive this Baron buff and maybe play for Elder Soul there. But it's not looking like that's going to be the case as Bethany Lutheran is just firing on all cylinders here. Looks like the Saints are waiting in a bush to take on a massive team fight. But look at all those wards. They see it coming from a mile away. They're not going to play stupid. They're going to play for these waves and play to take down the Nexus here as they play very slowly. Yeah, I mean, mid lane, take as long as you need because down in the bot lane, McFlurry Demon isn't getting ready to start knocking on the door of this bot lane turret. Has the attention of two of the Saints. This Siege minion could just do whatever it wants at this point, firing away slowly but surely. Just the mere presence of McFlurry Demon in this instance is enough to scare away the Saints. Look how fast Who that slams? turret evaporates to the DPS of McFlurry Demon in this instance. And that is going to be on top of the carries of the Saints. That is terrifying as they are now knocking on the door of the inhibitor. They're here at the pearly gates of their nexus here. And now Bakery Boy up at the top, trying not to get caught out, waiting behind that gate there. Looking to take an engagement a little bit in a safer spot where they can back out and maybe not get caught out. Gweiss there, going to take the damage and back off. That was like nothing though. Yes, nothing. Just a little bit of a little, like a little stone dropping on his back in the woods. But he's fine. He's ready for it. He's so tanky and he's so ready for it. As him and McFlurry Demon, the tanks, leading the charge here towards the bot lane turret. We're going to see a fight come out. A little bit of a push off. Oh. MF all going to do a lot of damage there on Zephyrot. Going to take the brunt of that. They're all very, very low. Unit going to get a killing spree there. Getting a double kill. Make it looking to make it a triple as Lonzo's very, very low. They take the turret out. And now it looks like this might be the nail in the coffin for the Saints. And they get an inhibitor. They have the Baron buff. And now just two turrets stand in the way. But they might as well be paper mache as they get taken out one after another. Zephyrot and Lonzo trying to make a final stand. But McFlurry Demon has the DPS, has the the stuns has anything you need and that is gonna be it Bethany Lutheran making this an interesting game three with <laughs> taking it all the way to the bank destroying the Nexus okay I give I give Nace Starley some crud sometimes for being a absolute <laughs> free regular season but this is the kind of games we love to see we have some a solid competition here. These playoffs are already giving us bangers here. The Saints, they tried that late game composition, but it fell behind too early. They could not make the plays happen in the late game. They were forced to make these really awkward overextension like solo picks, which granted did work here and there, but you can't necessarily rely on that, especially when you're not necessarily even an assassin comp. You're just a late game comp trying to like force a play out and eventually that's going to bite you. These five on five team fights or even the four on fours, while did look winnable, you can tell just with the extra utility of the Zyra, of the Oriana, alongside the damage across the board from the entire team, it was too much. Saints got overwhelmed. The team composition got slaughtered. I just want to say that felt like watching uh, someone who's addicted to gambling there. The Saints <laughs> kept going for those high-risk plays. Fair enough, like, yep. Double or nothing, double or nothing, double or nothing. I got to make it back, you know. They're behind, you know, I'll do the risky play, double it back, and they just kept failing every single time. You could tell that that's not the way to go. But we're all in for the next game. It's game three. We're going to take a quick back, be back with the draft, and see who takes this game.
Hello, everybody. Everything is all in on this last game. Bethany taking it home there in the second game with the first game going very much in the way of St. Clair. I'm your host for today, Matthias Mothais Talbot, joined by Dan Banners. Danners, what do you think? Okay, we got ourselves a series. I Going into today, I was still very optimistic that this was going to be uh, St. Clair one-sided. And it absolutely was not. Game one was, but game two, if anything, was the complete reverse. So it's really showing that like the draft is playing a huge um, difference onto this. We have the um, yeah the team comps, of course, the way that both of these teams are playing their compositions. That even though it seems like one team may get an advantage during draft, that it does not mean it's the end all be all. You're able to play around it. Bethany did that game too, and they're already throwing a mix up here. They're picking the or Saints picked the red side. Bethany gonna opt to first pick the Syndra instead of the Jacks, even though it's open. Yeah, and then we have a Maokai and a Jace pick, which are both interesting. And Syndra being stolen out from uh, St. Clair College is a massive hit because you always see Zephyr. That seems to be his main champs there, and the Oriana is not even a secondary pick there, so I'm interested would, to see what we have mid. I was just about to say, this is, might actually be kind of troublesome. The Saints might not have been expecting that because, yeah, they immediately banned out the Oriana, which was basically Zephyr's go-to if he doesn't get Syndra. And this draft is just looking really interesting now. We've got the Irelia getting picked up here for the side of Bethany. And then Trundle, I mean, it did extremely well last time. Gridded and not as beefy of a team comp here for St. Clair as of right now. And they're probably going to adjust their draft to kind of compensate for it. But that Trundle was an absolute menace in game two. Here we have the Zaya as the bot lane pick for the Saints. We saw that in the first game and it worked pretty well. It was not an overwhelmingly strong position, but that did let them get their picks and was better than the Jinx pick there. And as for the Irelia pick, it could be pretty interesting top. I just don't know how it's going to shake up. But the last draft was uh, pretty up in the air as well. We have the Senna ban for, against the Bethany. And there's the... Now, is that the that's a Malphite ban against yeah. the Saints, which is interesting as well. That's very interesting considering that Jace was already picked. I mean, in theory, this could go mid lane as well. You can kind of flex it a little bit. But I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen Zephyrot play Jace in the mid lane. And as of right now, I don't think I can remember a time where this did actually happen. So kind of putting them into a corner. And I think themselves are actually going to get rid of Jax, which fair enough. In theory, the Saints could have sniped it in that one. It is going to force Bakery Boy to pick up the Renekton, which means this is going to be Jace mid. That's a that's interesting. I've n I don't think I've ever seen Zephyrot play Jace mid, but it it could it could work. It that could work. Absolutely can. I'm just very very curious then as to where this Irelia is going, and we're gonna see the Zyra come out again. Zyra Ash. If this is like an ultimate CC bot lane, then there it goes. We used to, this is season two or three, isn't it? I'm like <laughs> oh my. I haven't seen Zyra in ages, but this was definitely one of the pairs that you would do because of how disastrously oppressive it is. Definitely. And Ash, also a very, very strong pick for an ADC. Mm -hmm. Ash just has such overwhelming damage, just such good huh? overwhelming ADC coverage, and I don't <laughs> Oh, like it's been a while. <laughs> what, All right. what is the Annie doing there? What is that? Annie support? Question mark? Is the Maokai support? <laughs> or, you know, the Druids? This no. used, I swear this is a throwback to old seasons, which is just making my League Boomer self just extremely excited. <laughs> but in theory, of course, we don't know what the actual like positions of the, the champions, who's playing what as of late, but this is just an absolute cluster of, like, <laughs> of flexibility, to say the least here. Because I could see Zephyrot picking up Annie as well. But then where does the Jace go? Like, I've seen Maokai support. Like, you did just mention that we saw Maokai support, I think, at Worlds even. Was it super effective? Maybe not, but it was possible. I mean, just Maokai's ultimate in general just makes Champion absolutely ridiculous. But this is such a weird draft. I see question mark pings in my mind, <laughs> spamming constantly. Well, my goodness. Well, with the last game, the draft looked very weird for, for how Bethany... Viking Esports there. 
but it worked in their favor. It seemed to disrupt the Saints and cause a little bit of confusion with them. But right now, I would say if I just had to not think of any tricks, any weird, you know, mind games going on, I would give the draft to Bethany Lutheran College right now. They just solid all around. And I'm interested to see how well this Irelia will do on the top lane. Absolutely. So this is going to be the first time we're going to see Irelia, I feel like, all season long, let alone here in the nice Star League playoffs. But one thing that does make me nervous is when I start seeing a team doing weird stuff, I assume they're on the back foot. Because, like, oh, um, this is uh, something you're not going to expect. Oh, um, look at this. Good luck playing against this. The thing is, is those are the strategies that usually aren't very practiced. So I am a little bit nervous here for St. Clair. I'm not going to lie. There's some of these picks that I feel rather comfortable with assuming they're the, the players that I think are going to be playing them are. It's like, do I trust Bakery Boy on Renekton, for example? Absolutely. Maddie on Maokai? Absolutely. But the Zephyrot for... Or the Zephyrot for Jace. The Jace <laughs> for Zephyrot seems new to me, but I feel like it's a meta enough pick that you have probably haven't practiced. Where does the Annie come from? And I guess the Zaya is meta enough that Rock Boom's probably played it a bunch too. And then looking at Bethany's, it's just overall solid across the board. There's some new stuff for them for this game. But again, it's not such of a far stretch that I feel like they'd be uncomfortable with it. Definitely. We have coverage. We have new <laughs> strats. But it looks like they're the old strats if you go way back. Absolutely. But with all of that said, I think we're going to throw it to a quick break before we get into game here. Get everyone prepped. Let those timers run themselves down. We'll be right back with the action here in Game 3.
Hello everybody, we are back, about to get into game three of Bethany Lutheran College versus St. Clair College. St. Clair, first game, taking it all home in an overwhelming sweep and just the opposite happening for Bethany Lutheran in the second game, swiping the board, clearing it all, sowing such discord into the St. Clair Saints. Once again, I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, and we're oh. right here in the game, joined by Dan Banners, Danners. Yeah, okay, that's one way to start things off here. Of course, gonna see our Saints up on the right-hand side, and we already had flashes burn there from Rock Boom, which is absolutely brutal to say the least, but if anything, I was gonna say with this team composition the Saints had drafted, then maybe the Annie would be the ones doing invadings, but it's actually the Saints getting jumped on first. Yeah, the Saints, they made their plays, they made their opinions. But, you know, maybe they should have been a little bit more democratic about their decisions there. And maybe they should have taken it to a vote. Just like you at home can vote for St. Clair in the Scholar Awards, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Seen that briefly up there. But, of course, we are currently in progress for being Collegiate Program of the Year here for the Scholar Awards. We're the only Canadian school on the list, and it does not take long. So as soon as we have a breather in the action, make sure to quickly go on votes or scholarawards.com slash vote. But here we are, right back into the game, and the, it is moving pretty fast here. Seeing a stun come out from Uni there, using showing that they have pretty good control with the Syndra there. Actually, never mind. <laughs> oh, hang on, down here, right by the uh, the Saints side, it's Maddie gonna be caught out off guard. Might be able to get out of dodge just fine. Looks like that's gonna be the case. It looks like Bakery Boy is going to make the run up top just to, or make the run backwards rather, just to make sure it gets out alive. But uh, Maddie, once again, very similarly to game number two, really getting messed with here in the jungle. Yeah, once again, Gweiss there just has such overwhelming pressure there in the jungle. Rock Boom and, and Lonzo not knowing how to really push back against this Zyra. The Zyra just, or actually, yeah, the Zyra just pushing them all the way back there to their turret. Yeah, very, very awkward position to deal with and of course this is just a really like messed up game to see the Saints picking these kind of picks. Nace playoffs their their playoff life on the line here up against Bethany. Whoever wins this game moves on forward. Bakery boy, good little slice and dice, a little bit of extra damage, but um like Flurry Demon gonna be kind of playing off to the same kind of game plan. Sure, it's not a Jax, it's a little bit tankier there with the Irelia, but uh Starting off strong, nearly like 20 some odd CS almost over uh, over Bakery Boy already. Very strong start there. Uh, but here in the mid lane, it's pretty even. Not much going on there. And I think it's like we said, the draft is looking pretty much in Bethany Lutheran's favor. St. Clair. You know, in the bot lane, I think they want to get an early stun, a little bit of an early gank, early lead, anything, any tiny advantage you could get against these champs, because Ash and Zyra can both snowball here, especially the Ash. Once they get going with the gold, it will be disastrous there. And Maddie currently just taking chickens, and it looks like Trundle's actually never on. That's Trundle stealing the chickens. Maddie's over on Gromp right now, mm -hmm. and once again. Weiss there, just bullying Maddie, taking his jungle, not letting him get any XP here in the early game, and then probably running away with it once again. Yeah, that's basically the way to describe it here. We've seen Bigger Boy in the jungle, maybe trying to catch the Trundle off guard. Does manage to jump onto Gweiss for a second, but next to no damage being done. Trundle extremely tanky, not going to be too bothered by that, but that's exactly it. Um, Gweiss being able to just do as he pleases essentially in the jungle of St. Clair. And a lot of the gameplay, a lot of the plan rather, kind of relies on Maddie being strong enough to be able to make these plays and be that supportive um, playmaker for the Saints. But by being so far behind constantly with all these invades, it makes things extremely difficult. However, compared to game number two, 
Maddie's only two CS down. So he's making up for the invades in other ways, keeping pace. And a lot of it does have to do with the Maokai being able to, I think, clear a little bit better than the Poppy. But able to hang in there even though it seemed like he was being pressured. Definitely the Poppy there was much more reliant on being up and at an advantage state. But here with the Maokai, they can pretty much just still have some utility even if they're down the levels. You know, you still have the ultimate with the roots, but... Once again, it's League. You want to be up levels. You want to be up in some way and have some advantage. But with this comp from St. Clair, it's looking a little bit more flexible in what they can do. Absolutely, but in a rather quiet start here, nobody's really ganking anything as of right now. And a lot of the like lane dominance is basically non-existent so far. Every lane, sure, seems to be slightly in the favor of Bethany, but not to the point where there's a real major uh, deficit. So Saints keeping even is definitely a good thing in this scenario. The team compositions, I mean, while there's no real major action happening here, what do you think between these two compositions? The later this goes, who's looking good? Ooh, it's gonna be tough. I honestly still think it might go to Bethany because the Ash, once that Ash is full build, all geared up there, that is gonna be so much damage to contend with. And the Irelia as well will get so strong later on and they can just run away with it. And <laughs> there's Bakery Boy backing in mid lane there. And <laughs> what are you thinking about this? Okay, so what I'm thinking about is uh, basically the exact same thing because the long range playmaking plus the safety that Bethany have here, and it's all really in the bot lane. You have the engage from the Ash Arrow. You have the disengage from the, the Zyra. Heck, uh, the Syndra can go in with that uh, Scout of the Week as well for some relatively long range engagement potential as well. And this Irelia is going to be the wild card, I feel like, here in this matchup, because we know how much of a strong duelist McFlurry Demon is. But how does it translate to this new champion? And right now, the Saints seem content, but I would not say they look confident. Definitely, they're not, it's not horrible for them. If they play their cards right and can get advantages here early on, not get snowballed, they could maybe turn this around, but I think it's all gonna come down to the objectives here. They lost every single objective in the last game. They need to start getting some of them here. They need to get those dragons, those rifts, and try and clear these waves well enough and protect their towers. And the one thing that I will give Saints credit for, though, in game number two, pretty much everything that could have gone right for Bethany absolutely did. Everything from which soul it was to, like, a couple of, like, micro timings that just, like, worked out in their favor with everything from team compositions and, like, certain engagements as well did go into their favor. But even then, the Saints were still at a fighting chance. They were still close, to say the least. And I think another deciding factor here in the games that we just cannot even guess about is the kills. There hasn't been a single kill on the board yet here today. We're just basically guessing off CS leads, and it looks like actually Bethany Lutheran secured the first Rift uh, Herald already, and that's going to be a major lead going in here. That's going to be a significant amount of gold, especially when... The kills have not started dropping yet, but that might change quick as McFlurry Demon is going in on the Renekton, but he has so much survivability that he's just going to get out of there. Yeah, absolutely. Just keeping things nice and even for the most part. Granted, a little bit of a lead now, like you're mentioning here for McFlurry Demon, but this first dragon is now up and ready to go, and the Saints are not necessarily in position for it. Actually, never mind. Here comes Maddie coming up through the river. Does have Zephyroth there for backup. A possible attempt at a four on four is in the cards here. Zephyrot gonna run back to mid lane, does not have TP available. So in theory, if something does throw down, it could be problematic for the Saints. Actually no, uh, Uni is gonna go up into the mid lane and meet them there. But you can see Bethany, they're hunting for some sort of pick. If they manage to get one, they can easily turn that into a dragon. They wanna try and make this a safe 
take for the Dragon Cloud Soul, Cloud Soul, or uh, Cloud Drake early on will be a massive boon, but overall, I think that they're just going to try and delay it for as long as they can, and now they're going to push the Rift there mid, and now that is the mid player taken out of the equation there for the push, leaving Gweiss there to move down and collapse on this bot lane and the rest of St. Clair College's team. But looks like they're just going to get out scot-free, retreat, play it safe, and both teams being very, very cautious. Neither team wants to be the first one to lose a member. Yeah, no, no team wants to be the first one to lose the member, but what was really awkward there was Bakery Boy doesn't have the teleport right now, and he did start walking down towards the mid lane to maybe get involved in the river, but then opted to turn back, so the McFlurry Demon there had all the time in the world to essentially get whatever... Uh, like minions they wanted. Ash Arrow going all the way up to the top lane, did not make the mark in the river, but almost maybe nearly made the play there onto Bakery Boy. But the Saints, after a slow period of time, do get this dragon started, but it is not gonna be started like rather comfortably. This is gonna turn to a team fight, and he dives on in. First blood goes over to Rock Boom. Maddie going on fourth, maybe to try and find another dog two is in relatively safe positions, but just has to deal with his Tibbers. But with the one player down, it is actually going to be Lonzo who's also down in this instance as well. I didn't even see him pop in that instance. So one for one, nobody can really make a play off of this. Yeah, that was uh, good for Saint. Or <laughs> Yeah, that was a very interesting trade back and forth there as things are not looking great. Oh, but wow, Zephyroth goes in and TP's in, goes for the dive and he gets in. He just walks right in there, gets the double kill and Rock Boom so close to death. But there he is, still hanging on by a thread. They're all going to back and spend their little cash of uh, allotment of money. And that is a significant lead that St. Clair can now press. Absolutely. But this gold lead, not necessarily too huge here. And the side of Bethany, just a couple hundred in the bank for for the favor. Dragon's still up. We see that's going to be Lonzo just going to get miraculously popped in the river. Uni and uh, Gweiss are going to be able to secure that one, which means this dragon is just free pickings. Yeah, they're going to burst this dragon down real quick as no one is there to contest. And now the first dragon is going over to Bethany Lutheran. While they are down one kill now, <laughs> it looks like things are starting to swing their way and the Saints need to start taking these jungle objectives a little bit more seriously. It seems like they've passed every single one of them up so far, and it's starting to burn them. Yeah, they're going to maybe try to collapse here onto Gweiss, though, who's cop to in a rock and a hard place. Zephyrod going to be the first part to engage, but he opts not to dive in wisely. It would have been directly into Showmaker's uh, strangle thorns, and it would have been brutal. Actually, hang on to the secondary engage. Rock Boom is going to get the second kill of the game here for himself. Does manage to take down Showmaker. Now, Zephyrot hunting around does have the cannon available to maybe try and get a snipe onto Dog 2. That would still hurt. And to be fair, Zephyrot, two kills in the pocket for himself as well as an assist. So, compared to game number two, where he was kind of like in the, the middle ground. He's a little bit ahead here in this mid lane battle this time by, and it's still very, very dangerous, but still squishy. What is this positioning though? This is gonna be brutal. Alonzo is gonna go down, and so oh, wow. will Rock Boom, never mind! Wow. They're gonna turn it! And fantastic job from the Saints bot lane, but the shutdown still does happen. So Rock Boom is on fire with a five eliminations. But that shutdown did go over to the mid laner. That was amazing to watch. A horrible position to be caught out in, but that managing to, to try and even the playing field. Well played by Rock Room. You know, got to do the best with what you're given. But overall, things are not looking good for them. They are up gold right now and up kills, but they are not up towers. They're not up the dragon. And this is what happened in the last game here. This seems like they let all the objectives slide by the wayside as Bethany Lutheran just has their eye on the ball for what they want, and that is those towers. But it looks like... All oh, the minions down bot. Yeah, the bot tower already down, and looks like they're going to secure another Rift Herald, which very well already could be another additional tower. Yeah, 
absolutely, and it does not look like the Saints are going to be in any position to try and contest this. Rift Herald going over to the pocket of Bethany, nice and easy. Where do they opt to take this? It could very well be a quick and easy destruction here onto this mid turret if they do opt to do so, but definitely going to take their time with it. They don't have to use it right away, of course. But now, oh, actually, as I say that, a little bit off to the side, we do have the Rift Herald coming down. That would have been up on the top lane, actually. So, Baker Boy's got to be forced to run for the hills and just try to not deal with two members of uh, Bethany plus a uh, Rift Herald. Kevin, now the fights are coming out on all fronts here. We got something happen in the top lane, and it looks like Gweiss and McFlurry are going to get Bakery Boy, catch him off wow. guard. McFlurry Demon slaying Bakery Boy. That's a tier and two. That's going to be another turret down. That is crazy. Bethany Lutheran just running away with it right now, and the Saints just trying, clamoring for any advantage they can get here. I know they're up kills, but <laughs> everywhere else, they are. Not doing great as Rockboom and Lorenzo look to try and even out the playing field by getting the mid turret with Maddie there, supporting them in the back. With a TP coming out inside of Bethany Lutheran, they're going to have to back off. Yeah, so the Saints are going to be behind on gold to start things off. Granted, though, they have not gotten in an, like any tur turret at all yet. If they were able to get maybe one, maybe two, this game would be pretty close to evened up, but... As we see, it looks like Bethany Lutheran are going to be trying to extend their lead while they have it. It's going to take one more turret and try to get there. The arrow, oh. okay, that could have been bad. But actually, Lonzo's still in a world of hurt. Timbers is going to go down. But Lonzo, you're not the thresh that the tanky thresher we're used to. And he is going to hang on by a thread. This might be turned. Lots of AoE damage in that little corridor from Zephyrot and Rockboom. Fantastic job. Rockboom still has the ultimate in the pocket. They want some kills here. Maddie's on the flank. So many low health bars, but it's so much gold on the table. Can they get it? Maddie's looking, but they're all focusing in on him. Nobody is really healthy enough to take the lead here in this fight. But that turret even doesn't have much health left. Are they going to try to push it? That is going to be a big blast from Zephyrot. But there's so many low health bars that are just going to barely get away. Such a barely missed opportunity there. They could have maybe turned it all around there. And it looks like they're still trying to go for it. They take down a turret. They're trying to prevent the backs. They're Maddie going to unleash the ult. Get Weiss there. But none of his team came with them. And they're not going to find a single kill. But they are going to find the Mountain Drake, which is going to help them a a little bit, but it's not the best streak to get here in the game for their current team comp. Hey, I'll just take it from the gold at this point, right? So this is going to get us within 1,000. So this game, still anybody's game. Trying to take the breakdown here. It looks like the Hex Dragon Soul is going to be the case. So we're going to be zipping around this map, it looks like, this time by. But <laughs> it's all, like, rock boom or bust the way that it looks like right now. And maybe I'll give credit, of course, to Zephyrot in terms of his damage as well. Still in the lead technically in that lane by a decent margin at that as well so um and now more than ever it's protect the carry <laughs> and it's do or die on that if there is any sort of flanking any sort of picks it is going to be absolutely brutal here for saint Clair. and the problem is the side of bethany have multiple tools to make that pick happen we've seen it nearly take out alonzo that time by the fact that he didn't die in that last fight was so surprising considering he was caught out by himself but if that happens to a uh Isaya, that happens to jace i don't think they're going to be as lucky granted rock boom does have the um the one get out of jail free card with the ultimate but once that's gone it's gone Definitely, they only have so much luck to play with, only so many cards in their hand left to play as looks like Bethany Lutheran is posturing towards Baron, clearing that out, warding it up, and they're all collapsing upon it. And if huh? this Baron gets taken this early, this could be disastrous for the Saints. They need someone to contest it, and they need uh, it lands the Asher or there, Alonzo there. McClure Demon is going in there, he dashes on it, gonna try and get the dash reset off of Lonzo, and he finds it, but to shut down coming out from Rock Boom. Zephyrot gonna get a kill as well. He's on a spree right now. Gwice gonna try and take him down as well, and it looks like the Saints are gonna flip it here as Maddie is slain dog too. 
And they try and push them all the way off of Baron, and that is the place we need to see if the Saints want to keep their dream alive. And it looks like they're going to go for an early Baron themselves. If they're going to take it, they're going to take it right back. I mean, the juggler's still there, and Maddie's actually extremely low, and I don't think a smite's available. So this could be extremely scary here. Gweiss does not have the ultimate, but still very taggy. Zephyrod is going to be the first line of defense here, and a big burst damage is going to go down. That's the Jace going down, and the steal! Never mind, that's not the steal at all. That is Maddie securing that one barely. I thought the Malkai was on the other side. Don't mind me, but Saints getting the Baron, so that's going to be huge. Going to get themselves in this one and even get Gweiss. But this wow. fight is not over two teleports mcflurry demon looking to secure one never mind here comes yudi he's gonna get one and takes care of the maokai if rock boob goes down that is going to be a huge bounty going on over to bethany lutheran but the cavalry has arrived a messy baron team fight baiting me even a little bit there <laughs> nicely done there for the saints <laughs> to get that one but uh all right we take those yeah, we take those indeed, and you want to try and reset with your team. Use this buff to full advantage while you have it. And they need to use it very quickly, even out the towers are down to. And hopefully they can try and play for some drags now. Yeah, absolutely. Rockboom getting out of there was absolutely huge. Gets two um, eliminations on their own, right? Sephiroth losing the bounty over to the other side of Bethany is going to hurt. However... I think we take the Baron and give it up any day of the week at this point. As long as we can make this Baron power play work in our favor here. Showmaker is going to get absolutely dumpstered on. And Bakery Boy getting his first kill of the game here after a solid Tiffers ultimate and big stun from Lonzo. I think if they can just take some turrets here, this could be the thing they need to flip the script of the game. They're up kills quite a bit. They're up gold, a uh, at least uh, nearly 2,000. And... If they can just get these turrets, I think it's just losing those two rifts is what really did it. Or losing the... Actually, they got the rifts. Never mind. I think just losing those turret damage is mainly what's holding them back here. No, absolutely. And this, as a little, this game gets later and later, I know you can hear us fumbling a little bit, but I can only imagine the tense, intensity that the players themselves have to go through here late night League of Legends action for your playoff life. Absolutely intense scenario here for both the teams and everybody involved here in this matchup tonight. 20 seconds now for this dragon to come on through. Currently, dragon scores even, just one to one. That win condition is still a little ways away here, but who wants to take it and maybe try to get some extra buffs in the pocket as we move along in this game? I think we're seeing some backs here from Bethany the Lutheran, and maybe yeah, they're, not they're gonna back. You're gonna try and reset, gain the health back, and reset for this dragon fight here. And they're not gonna get there in time, though. The contest as Rock Boom just bursts it down with all that DPS, and they take their second dragon, the Hex Drake here. And now they're gonna clear mid. They still have this Baron buff. They can still make something happen here, but they're gonna play it safe as it's probably just waning out right now. Yeah, they gonna end up playing it safe and actually McFlurry Demon is just gonna straight up 1v1 Bakery Boy. The dominance is popped, but you have next to no HP left in this one. Bakery Boy may not be long for this world unless he can make an escape, but he's probably gonna have to sacrifice his life, whether it is to the Zyra or whether it is to the turrets. We see him still running amok down in the bot lane. Going to end up going down here, it looks like. The roots, not quite. Oh, does get taken down. Snipe shot coming on through here from Dog2. Showmaker gonna pick that one up. But yeah, Big Reboy just caught, pushed a little bit too far ahead. Yeah, he overextended a little bit too much, trying to find some way out there, but got collapsed on nonetheless. And Zephrot gonna take a tower in the top lane, a much needed tower for Saints, the Saints right now. And I think they might be able to turn this around. They might be able to win this. It seems as time goes on and on, St. Clair College is starting to win more and more fights. They're starting to take more and more objectives. And if they continue on this path, I think we might see a win coming out for them. I mean, this is still striking distance though. Like sure, the Saints got themselves a little bit of a lead here, but I'm not gonna lie. A lot of this relies on Rock Boom staying alive. And we mentioned like, sure, if he has his ultimate up, he has his flash, he has his cleanse. 
does have multiple tools to keep himself safe from maybe one or two hits, but there are a lot of engage tools, a lot of CC tools on the side of Bethany Lutheran College that could absolutely shut him down. And we know Rock Boom loves to dive on in and secure kills quickly. If he maybe overextends ever so slightly, that could be a massive turning point in this one. He's going to have to try to... I guess withhold the jitters of being so far ahead in the game thinking you can take on the world. Because we see even just little death bush plays like this. It just takes one moment. He still has that big old uh, 700 gold bounty on him too. So if Rockboom could stay safe, I think Saints have this rather convincingly come the next team fight. But one mispositioned moment could absolutely flip the tables. Flurry Demon looking for these fights, being hyper aggressive, taking them even under tower there. Bakery Boy gonna have to back out there. Okay. Out there. And it looks like the Saints are gonna take another tower in mid. And now there's just one tower that remains in mid lane, guarding the net, uh, guarding the inhibitor. As looks like he's gonna have to back there. Flurry Demon gonna try and support his team. As we see a TP also come out from Zephyroth. Gonna try and burst on the tower ta turret there. And they get it. And now Bakery Boy gonna take the 1v1 oh. with Flurry to stop the back. Yep. Maybe buy the Saints enough time to get out, but there's a big fight coming out. We lose one. Rockboom on a killing spree, taking out Gleis there. And now they're chasing him into the jungle. Rockboom gonna get another kill on there McFlurry Demon. And he dashes in. He gets another kill on the Syndra. And he's going in trying to take down Dog 2. And will he find it? He may very he's well. Low, but he's a little bit too slow. They're gonna get out there. And now they're gonna try and push the advantage and deprive them of those super minions because that is what would bring them back into the game. They farm those for every ounce of XP and gold that they have. I mean, Baron's up again. They could very well try to make the play, but they would be running up against two players. They have next to no HP for themselves. They are gonna have to back, so sure. They did win that fight, barely. They got some decent damage done to some turrets, but there's still no inhibitors down. There's no real major game-changing objectives taken down here for the side of the Saints. They have options now, which is gonna think, make things a little bit messy because we know that Bethany Lutheran want that five on five team fight, but at the same time, Saints are a little bit more well equipped to handle it here compared to how they were in game number two. So with now Baron getting some vision around here for Bethany, 40 seconds or so for another dragon. And what are these Baron calls? Are we gonna do this again? It looks like we're gonna run it back here as Bethany Lutheran takes the early Baron fight, and now they're bursting it out very quick. They have the DPS to back it up as they need to rush in there and try and stop it. And it looks like Bethany Lutheran smites it with ease, and all five are going to try and get out there. We get the Maokai all going to stun out Gweiss, but he gets out for free. It's ever going to get burst down by Uni, and that is going to be it, and they're going to back out of here. Bethany Lutheran played that pl situation absolutely perfectly. They used the straggle thorns to cut off the entire river if the Saints wanted to try and steal that and they weren't in position over the over the Baron Pit wall themselves, they would have been getting knocked up. They probably would have ended up dying and that would mean there's a free dragon. So now the Saints are gonna have to try and get this dragon across a Baron buffed team of Bethany Lutheran while 4v5, no chance. You give that up and just like that, this game's basically even. It's flipped the script already once again, but with how late it is, those Baron buffs get scarier and scarier. It feels ever so closer to the game end when you can just make such amazing plays when you have that buff. It gives you so much freedom to do whatever you want. Just as Weiss resets, you know, plays neutral, re-gets those, bar those uh, jungle buffs, and it's probably gonna, you know, play together as a team, everyone at full max capacity, and shove one lane and try and take an inhibitor here. I mean, if this turns into a five on five, even if the Baron buff is still on all the members of Bethany Lutheran, I still don't think that's a like a, a hands down win for them in this situation. Unless again, if they can manage to snag out Rock Boom, but he's been doing a very good job of staying in the back line, staying behind the beefy members of this Saints roster and keeping himself safe. So we see they're kind of poking around the bushes here. This is actually kind of scary here for the Saints. Sure, they spot two, they do some decent damage, but where's everybody else? They're actually kind of split up here. So Saints, even through a Baron buff to Bethany Lutheran are looking to maybe push up a little. Yeah, here we are. Looks like Weiss, again, yeah, once again, just clearing out that jungle, and it's... Oh, that's looking, greedy. Oh, Baker Boy getting a little greedy here, pushing up very, very far, trying to steal the buff, trying to disrupt Weiss there in the jungle, but he's gonna try and dash towards him, but he gets out for free. He knows he has his team. The team has his back. 
and they get out scot-free. Yeah, that could have been problematic there had he maybe had to do a fight without one of your tanks, but Bigger Boy is going to be able to get out of there just in the nick of time, it looks like. So, uh, no harm, no foul, I suppose. No major objectives now on the board for a little while. Saints just kind of waiting for this Baron buff to time out. In theory, it's all up to Bethany Lutheran if they want to be the ones in the driver's seat to make the play. But I think even they are not necessarily 100% confident in their abilities to take a team fight in this scenario, especially under a turret. So, once again, they're just going to push up their lanes, um, get the gold that they could possibly get through them, the minions, through their jungle, go back, buy, and within a couple minutes' time, it could very well be time for another objective. And it looks like we're gearing up for a little bit of a team fight mid. We're just trying to delay any sort of game-ending push from Bethany Lutheran here in the mid lane, as they're all just playing as a team, being collective, just being a little nice walking ball of death as Vice here moves through St. Clair's jungle, clearing it out, getting any sort of advantage, warding it up and waiting in a bush. He knows that red buff must be coming up soon as he wants to ambush somebody, but he's going to back off. Both teams playing pretty passively, not want, wanting to be the one to start the team fight and lose it here. As yeah. Vice goes in uh -oh. for a fight, he finds a straggler there, Maddie on his own in the jungle, but it's going to get found out, sighted out, and now he removes that freedom from him, move, rocking around for a little while as we reset back to mid lane. Yeah, this is your nice Star League playoffs like season on the line here. And of course, that was introduced on Twitter like not too long ago, earlier this uh, earlier this week. This also has implications for the nice Super Conference because you need to make, I think it's the top eight of playoffs in your region to make it in there, which of course the Saints are going to want to be in, which I guess to compare, it's the equivalent of like how NECC has the Legends Division. Um, basically... I will lost now would be absolutely heartbreaking on multiple levels. So everybody being so careful here, especially with how late it is today. My goodness. Yeah, they're all jumbled up here mid. This is the make or break moment. The inhibitor is actually vulnerable here. So if they can make the right play at the right time, it could all go their, their way right now. McFlurry Demon in the bush here. Trying to find a little bit of engage. Every single poke here is very scary. You do not want to be caught off guard. I mean, that's the one person you don't want to face check, though, on the side of Bethany. If you face check McFlurry Demon, you very well might just get 1v1. Oh, Gweiss, all on his lonesome, though. They might catch him out here as the whole team is there to collapse on him if he tries to make a greedy play. Bakery Boy a little bit out there. He gets caught out, and now he's going to get stunned up. But the Maokai ult rolls through. Maddie going to stun up a oh. lot of them. And now they're going to take out one, take out two. They're all very, very low. And the Guardian Angels are coming out there. And now Zephyr finds one what? and two. And they're falling one by one. Maokai going to find one as well. And that is a team white for St. Clair College. They get the pace. That is insane. And now they're free to make a play. This might be it. This might be the thing they need to take it all home rock boom everyone doing their part of oh. all the props that i was giving uh, like rock boobs efron and the rest of the squad it's actually bakery boy who was able to bait out all the ultimates from the side of bethany lutheran college they got antsy they dove the tank and it allowed for the rest of the saints to do the damage they needed it did not matter if bakery boy got wounded because we got your nexus we got the next spot in the next star league playoffs and what a hard fought spot that is it was all on the line it looks pretty easy they're leaning back in their chairs after that first game but bethany lutheran college woke them up out of their deep sleeps and told them hey you gotta give it your all you gotta give us our your full attention and put it all on the line to secure your spot going into nace star lead further on the playoffs as you can tell it's gonna be good game after good game all the big players are out here Okay, I would have been absolutely heartbroken had this been the end of the run. And I'm not going to lie, that game could have gone either way. So absolutely fantastic job from our Saints. Big props to Beth, uh, Bethany Lutheran College. They've put up way more of a fight than I was expecting, to say the least. And I don't mean that the dog on them, no pun intended, but uh, <laughs> basically fantastic job nonetheless.
Yeah, that was a great match. Those the, the, the whole series was amazing to watch. It was back and forth fights <laughs> nonstop. But overall, they, they you know we criticized the comp from St. Clair there in the beginning, but they made it work and they made it work well. I mean, at the end of the day, they just needed the damage to go to the right places, and they needed the gold to go to the right places. All the gold, for the most part, was on their DPS. It was on Rock Boom, it was on Zephyrot, and heck, even a little bit onto Alonzo there. You can still build a little bit of damage onto that support Annie and still be strong. And it looks like, again, that Bakery Boy was caught out that it was problematic. But meanwhile, they fire all their abilities at him, and he's still sitting there like a quarter health, like half health. And the Saints were able to turn and burn on it. And it's even more heartbreaking there for the side of Bethany because the support, the Zyra there, got a massive like four-player knockup on the Stranglethorns. They had a really good engage. But the positioning, that choke, was just so good at keeping the squishies alive. And they could not fire uphill like that. We had the high ground. And it worked in our favor. Yes, but with all that said, it has been a great game day. It's very late here. The oh it went gosh. all the way here to review our games. We went up against Valorant, TMU Blue, got the 2-0 victory, and a very similar thing in Overwatch with against Northeast University. We got mm. them in the 3-0 as well. Good day for Saints all around, but the last game here today in League of Legends they gave us a run for our money. Bethry, Bethany Lutheran College brought us all the way there, and it's been a great time. Thank you very much for casting with me up here, Mr. <laughs> Danners. Hey, thank you as well. It was an absolute pleasure. And, of course, a couple thank yous as well. Do want to shout out, of course, the sponsors that make this all possible. Of course, being the St. Clair College Alumni Association, St. Clair's SRC, HyperX Subway, and Tim Hortons. And then to everybody in the back room that made this game day possible. They're always chaotic, but the fact that we can get so many highlights across so many teams all at the same time, it would not be possible without you all. So thank you, Daniil, Amanda. Ari, who was doing the observing for Valorant, Gabriel, who was doing the observing for League of Legends, and TJ, who was doing the observing for Overwatch. Yes, but that's not all. This this is it for that this stream. But tomorrow we have another stream. It's gonna be another game day, and we will have League of Legends once again. We'll have over uh, Omega Strikers as well mm -hmm. as Call of Duty and. Nace Valorant, so it's going to be good. It's going to be a good one once again. So come right back here if you want more goodness. Absolutely. And that Call of Duty and that Valorant game there for Nace, that's also like first-round playoffs. So the postseason for Nace Star League continues on forward. Definitely going to be like games you don't want to miss. Heck, even Omega Strikers, from what I was hearing from Bailable earlier, um, basically winner of that game is guaranteed a top eight seeding finish which means you get a buy in your playoff round wow. so still lots of stakes on the line there so an exciting week coming up through but the last but not least before we close out we did kind of touch on it a little bit as the game was going on i want to touch on it one more time of course and that is the scholar awards for uh for our program, we were nominated as Collegiate Program of the Year. We're the only Canadian school that was actually nominated at all. So trying to uh, trailblaze here for Canadian Collegiate Esports and voting. Just vote for us for the Collegiate Program of the Year. It only takes about five seconds. You don't have to log into nothing or uh, give any sort of information. Just quickly go on over to Scholar Awards slash vote, or I think even exclamation mark vote in the Twitch chat will pop open that link. So that'd be absolutely amazing. If we can manage to win that thing, that'd be absolutely insane. But with that being said, any final thoughts for tonight? No, it's just a great time casting here, and the players, you can tell they're tired. They're probably very happy. It was a hard-fought victory, but overall, thank you everybody at home for joining us here, yes, watching us you. all the way through this long game day, but it was such a good one, such good gameplay all around from the Saints, and thank you very much, and join us tomorrow for more streams.